Alrighty, welcome in, welcome in. Thank you guys for joining me on Andrell's Amusement Academy. This is episode number eight. Fade on out of our nice pirate theme here. I really forget how good the music is on these various uh, old various tracks as I've been picking a different one for each one of these streams. Like, original game music was just great. Oh, it was a good time. But anyway, welcome in. Welcome in. We'll cut that music here for a minute. So, um, like I said, this is Andrew's Amusement Academy, uh, where me, a real-life theme park designer, uh, talks about uh, ride making and realistic coaster building in RCT2. Uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, the real rides that are behind these guys, and um, we'll kind of go through an example layout of each, maybe two and if there's time at the end or suggestions in chat and things like that, um, we can tackle those as well. Um, one of the cool things, if you uh, look in my profile, there's some chat commands that you can use to affect the um, the stream. And it's generally going to be more fun when I actually have a park that I'm doing just with some of the stuff that you can do in there. But, um, you know, either way, it's a fun little uh, add-on to Twitch that Ali414 uh, had put together. So... Uh, things that you can try out. You can change the weather and all sorts of, of weird stuff, uh, but it's kind of neat. Uh, today, what we're going to look at is, um, my, my theme is Under the Rails. I know last week we did Intamin, or I guess three weeks ago was the last stream. We did uh, Intamin posters, just kind of went through the chronology of all that, and then we've been doing other various ones. So this one's a little more widespread, a couple of different manufacturers here, but uh, what we've got is nine coasters here. Um, so first off is the Arrow Suspended Coaster, and then we have the Vacoma Suspended Coaster. Then we're going to get into some pretty weird stuff uh, that you don't see very often. We're going to look at the Carry Pro Suspended Coasters. We're going to look at the Reverchun Inverted Coaster, or Inverted Mouse, of which there is one uh, in the world. We're going to look at the Looping Coaster, but we're going to look at the Doppelmeyer Mountain Glider, which I'm going to hazard a guess that probably at least half of you guys don't know this one, which is understandable because it operated for like two months and it's not here anymore. Um, the OG guy probably knows it, um, I'm guessing. But uh, we're going to go take a look at that one. I know Sheep knows what I'm talking about. So that'll, that'll be a fun one. Um, <clears throat> oh, you got the credit? Oh, man. I am super, super jealous, actually. Like, that's that sounds amazing. The thing looked terrifying, to be honest. Uh, but that's really, really cool. Um, so when, when we get to that one, I hope you're still here because I want to talk to you about it. Um, so uh, then we'll do a b and Flying Coaster. We're going to do the Vacoma Flying Dutchman, one of the original ones. Uh, and then we're going to look at the Vacoma Stingray. And finally, everybody's favorite, the Zamperla Valaire. Uh, if you haven't ridden one, then you don't know that that's sarcasm. So let's uh, let us jump in. Um, all right, so uh, as we do, let's uh, jump over to the database to begin our uh, stuff. So first off, we are going to look at the aerodynamics uh, suspended coaster. So this is one of the earlier models of uh, under the rail type rides. Uh, but the first one is the one that is probably the most infamous that I think a lot of people know about is Bat at Kings Island. So this uh, didn't open for very long. Uh, due to a lot of issues, including uh, turns that weren't banked, uh, brakes that clamp from the bottom rather than on the track itself, and a number of other stress fractures and, and other issues. Um, so cool looking ride, definitely had a lot, of, uh, a lot of layout to it, two different lift hills and a pretty substantial layout overall. Um, eventually Vortex took its place, uh, rest in peace both of them. Uh, but you can kind of see here, it's a pretty wild looking ride. There's a couple of POV clips out there that you can see, which uh, show the train going well beyond 90 degrees to the track, which is not going to be good for anybody's uh, steel stresses. Um, so unfortunately, this one is uh, gone and done, but surprisingly, Kings Island gave them another chance later on, and that suspended coaster is still there. So... Let's talk about the suspended coaster just a little bit, kind of what it can do. Uh, in RCT, it's it's not very much. Uh, you got helixes, you've got diving drops, steep drops, things like that. that that's really about all the real ones are going to do anyway. Um, for the most part, this was the first one uh, that came up after uh, Bat, and it's a very neutered version of um, what the ride was. It's a pretty simple 
simple layout. So this is um, uh, this is a pretty dull looking ride. I didn't ever get a chance to to read it or to ride it. Um, and yeah, you're you're right, cheap. Alpenflug, uh, was the the Messerschmitt uh, ride is the same sort of thing, and Stengel did that one too. Um, so you would think uh, there would have been a little bit more information out there about it because Stengel realized that uh, it needed to be banked, and they said no uh, because of cost. Obviously, it bit them in the end. One of the cool things about XLR8, which is the uh, uh, Astro World version here, is that the three back cars were reversed at some point. So you had a little bit of a unique experience there. It's the only suspended coaster that had that. Um, but they got a little bit more daring after a little while, and we got to what many regard as the suspended coaster, uh, Big Bad Wolf at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Uh, also, rest in peace. Um, this is the signature element here, this big drop into a, uh, a nice uh, turn over the water, over the Rhine River. Um, really incredible ride. I did get a chance to ride this one multiple, multiple times, and it was something special. Uh, very, very intense. Uh, I'm not there yet, Chief. Hang on. I said most. Most regard. Um, so it's uh, it pretty darn cool. Uh, it, neat ride. Two, two different uh, lift hills and... Uh, pretty intense ride as it was so we definitely kind of ratcheted it up to where the intensity should have been so fun fact about this this was originally short started out as a schwarzkopf project that uh was eventually retooled and reworked by by arrow um that's great that you got to ride it i i was a huge fan of it i mean it was a great ride really really cool now to sheep's point uh did i build the layout for alley i did do that one yeah and uh it uh it was a fun one it was kind of a mix of big bad wolf iron dragon because i liked how the lifts crossed uh back and forth to each other uh, and a couple of other ones so this one uh to sheep's comment earlier uh is the one that i would probably regard as the one that i would most like to ride uh because um uh, again this one is also gone as are well, quite a few of the suspended coasters as you've seen but this one is kind of my pick for the craziest suspended coaster that was ever built um hey mav thanks for joining so this one is it was an everland in south korea um and you can see here this is about the most of it that you can see and you got a lift hill up into the abyss into the trees and a big drop out and then the whole thing is low to the ground lots of corners lots of really high banked elements in here so a lot of really cool stuff um uh, through here you can see the first drop there um Definitely high stress uh, on the elements, I'm sure, just based on how wild this ride was, but um, definitely a cool looking ride. Um, you know what, we will be doing this a little bit, so we're gonna take a look at some POVs uh, here too. So this one, assuming it's gonna play fully, um, hopefully it doesn't buffer too hard. This is, you can kind of see how wild this ride was. This POV is not very good. I'm not about to play the theme park review POV. Um, but, um, it's, uh, right down there on the ground, through the trees, back and forth, and, you know, all these near misses, really high banked corners, it's some pretty crazy stuff. Um, I mean, you really don't get a sense of where you are until you're back in the brake run. Um, and I think, to me, this is the epitome of what makes a good suspended coaster. So, using the terrain, um, really, I, I would never advocate building a suspended coaster without even a little bit of terrain. So, um, definitely suggest that as uh, as far as your design goes so we'll we'll kind of do that in some sense here but you know that's the whole ride pretty pretty wild wild thing uh and uh man i, I love it the other one that i want to talk about just real briefly is one that a lot of people don't know about because it wasn't around for very long is uh hayabusa so um Hayabusa was at Tokyo Summerland uh, near Tokyo, and this one is is not super notable for most of the layout, except for the first drop, which is really darn steep and twisted. So you can kind of see it here. It's got this really great steep drop as it pulls out to the side. Um, and yeah, it, it was closed due to an accident. It sounds like the trains bumped. Uh, I don't believe it was a fatal accident. Uh... Yeah, it doesn't say on the database, but look at that drop right there. Kind of a steep drop right into this diving corner. So uh, definitely a pretty cool, almost reminiscent of Big Bad Wolf, but perhaps a little bit more extreme. 
but a good looking ride and one that is gone and also very little trace of this one uh, existing at the park anymore either. So anyway, that's um, that's enough of these. So let's jump on back into the game. And well, let's take a look. So what we'll do is get our suspended coaster here. Where are we? Suspended coaster. So let's give a lot of space because these can be pretty sprawling. Um, you don't really see these very compact. We'll go kind of high off the ground to start. These trains are long in, in the game, and you can go with six cars per train or seven. Uh, a lot of the larger ones did have seven. So let's get to that point. So that's going to be nearly a station piece per car. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, full station piece per car. Um, we're going to do something like Eagle Fortress just because it's the one that I really like. Um, so out of the station here, we're going to have a little bit of a curve. We'll put a couple of brake pieces before the lift. So one of the things that uh, is pretty crucial on the uh, these rides is that the swinging wasn't allowed on the lift hill. So there's a little trough underneath that uh, holds the ride in place. And... On rides that have a second lift hill, like Big Bad Wolf um, or Ninja at Six Flags Magic Mountain, there's a little catch down here um, as far as like scenery goes. So uh, in the game, you might do something like this, where you kind of come through and build, probably be a little bit further up. Let's do it like this. See it? Yeah, Vortex Canada's Wonderland is great. It's still running really well, or at least it was the other year when, uh, or last year, I guess, when I wrote it. All right, so we could even come up an extra one in here if you really wanted, but uh, just from a theming standpoint, I would suggest... Not... Oh, not paused. Real quick. Kind of build something like a little track like this, and then the thing has... Uh, pieces here and basically there's a little piece that uh, sticks down from the car that catches in here and it holds the car steady as you go up the lift hill um, so you're going to need brakes you're never going to hit the lift hill at speed you're always going to slow it down before you hit the lift hill um, so if you have a second lift that's something to consider on on these guys is you need a full brake run before it if i remember right big bed will fully stopped on the brake run and then advanced onto the lift i don't think you need to do that but you, you can if you want all right so lift hill wise these kind of vary in height you're not going to have something huge um but you know since we're on the terrain we could we could definitely um definitely get there yeah hydro i did um you can you can see those in there um that's actually how we ended up getting those supports too that uh i really like to use liam made those for me when i, I said i was going to be building that that model all right, so when you get to the top of the lift hill, we're going to do a little bit of a straight piece. Now, if you look at the real ones, it's actually angled down just a little bit. Uh, again, this is just to get the whole train off the lift hill before you start picking up the speed. Um, so what we will do is is kind of look at that, um, maybe half the train here uh, before you get going. And then um, we'll start out. And one of the things that I like to use for these is this downward, the helixes, because... Um, this is one of the few rides that gives you the quarter helix option, this and the invert, and um, some of the, I think Flyers got it. Uh, but this is really what you want to do. You don't want airtime hills on this ride. You don't want just you know hills in general. You want to do it pretty much all with corners. The whole idea of these rides are to get you that side-to-side -side swinging. You want those lateral forces to really pull the ride around. Unfortunately, RCT didn't learn from that's mistake or from Alpenflug's mistake and neither of these or none of these rides have banked corners um, which is a little bit odd but you know it's fine um, so we're gonna leave that as it is and uh, gonna come through here and let's do a and a nice little dive off of our hill side here we're gonna pick up a good good bit of speed as we come on down Yeah, this is true. You don't need the bank straight piece to get the, to get things moving in the right direction. Uh, if you're playing for ride stats in the game, this is one of those that's going to be a, a bear to get right. Um, these are very difficult rides to get into reasonable stats uh, for uh, for the game. They definitely are on the more intense side, I would say. 
All right, let's see what we're looking at as far as those. A little bit slow over top. Kind of want to go a little bit kind of back and forth on, on the thing. So I'm trying to do a turnaround of sorts before we cross back over the lift hill. Um, and straight pieces aren't a problem. So like this guy here, the straight piece that we have isn't isn't an issue. Uh, I generally am not a huge fan of the um, of um, like the steep hills, so I'm going to use the steep hill for this first drop here. But that's you know I wouldn't do it on an uphill otherwise, and then that's just a personal preference. I nothing really against it, I suppose. All right. What we can do is put up like this. We can drop down and get underneath. You do have to watch out for the clearances on this one. So this is a three height clearance ride. Um, unlike pretty much every other ride. Yeah, X could do it. And again, it's it's one of those where it's going to be the, um, the new save file before we get to anything else. Uh, let's accelerate this lift a little bit we can get up to five or six miles per hour a lot of these tend to have slow lift hills but there's really no reason that it couldn't be accelerated a little bit there you go that's kind of a nice little dive down we can go up just a little bit and we'll swing this up over the lift hill so that'll kind of be a neat little look there And so really the 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 one thing that's hard to kind of get away with for or get away from on these types of rides is really just a whole ton of back and forth like slalom pieces is really I could easily say just you go out the whole way doing that turn around and come all the way back uh, so you could do that same same kind of look but you want to at least adjust a little bit and these do lose speed somewhat quickly We can kind of drop down a little bit. At least keep some interesting interesting movement going on. This is one of those where it does, doesn't look very good unless you're at, at this angle. So I kind of look at this where you view this from this diagonal angle. So you really don't want to have this angle also. This is where you get that balance of realistic uh, build in the game versus... Um, versus something that's maybe realistic, but not quite the best looking. You like coming back this way. We can go back and build our break run too. So you want your block breaks. We're gonna go six of those. And that's a kind of standard break run, and then we're gonna go at least half more. I will dump another block break back here just to give it a little bit of space. One of the cool things about these rides is when you hit the break run, you're almost sideways just because it you're going from kind of moving back and forth on the banked track to suddenly stopped. And it's it's a pretty cool feeling uh, to just suddenly stop after uh, moving because you you swing really high up off the off the ground. Let's see if we can clear that up underneath. I'll turn off our clearances. That may not be a bad way to do it. Put this back in continuous circuit so we can still have our 
little test here. You don't have to go very long on these. None of them are terribly long coasters in real life, so definitely don't worry too hard on that. Um, you're really not going to have a whole lot of full helixes because you really want to keep the train moving back and forth, like left, right, left, right. So you're really not going to see a whole lot of this. Um, you'd see more so just the, the back and forth kind of like this. I guess the physics is just hard with it, sheep. I mean, I I don't know. It's a good question. I would like to see some some decent attempts at it. little too close right there. Let's get to our lowest point right here at the end. I guess, well, two lowest points here, zero and zero. Yeah, I mean, No Limits, I feel like, gave the best, um, the best try at it, but it was still, still a little bit rough. Well, that's the thing. These are these were such a a niche ride, and oh, be surprised that cleared there. Um, these were were such niche rides, so it's not surprising to me that they're not quite the the forefront of poster gaming. Tricky little ending part here, I suppose. Still has decent speed coming through there. Yeah, you're you're right with the with the with the steep slopes. No, not two lift hills on this one. To be honest, I I kind of prefer to have it a little more um a little more easily uh um or or I I guess more kind of where it just goes straight into the um into the brake run after the kind of intense layout. Would be interesting to get that to land right. Well, and that's the problem. You, you would be really nice if you could have just a little bit of um, of, of adjustment there, uh, which is why I don't like. This is why I always advocate not building to the RCT height markers. So, like, if you're building a giga coaster, don't build a giga coaster. Don't build a giga coaster that's uh, that says that it's. Um, 300 feet in the game because it's just going to look like crap. All right. Actually, not a bad little ending deal. You can get under there. This is not my favorite ending. Oh, thank you, GMA Gamer, for the follow just a minute ago. Yeah, that's a terrible one. I think we're nearly there, but just have to kind of get past the final little bit here. Yeah, I think that's an appropriate scale. I, I don't think you want to go any uh, or too much larger. I mean, you, you can. It's just the, the biggest issue that I found from an RCT standpoint is the transition between large and small elements so it, it can always look a little funky when you get into um rides that have a um an elevation change that's a little bit bigger 
uh, or you go from large inversions to small inversions. You can just do Felix here. Close. Lines up if for that shoot. Be able to say, let's take this, this thing. We'll still need the straight section. Maybe a little bit too slow, actually. <laughs> it's not going to line up. Uh, we're going to cheat. That looks close enough. A little bit slow of a finish, so I think it's something that we'll we'll look to adjust a little bit later. Um, but I think it is time that we moved along. So let's all that one. So what we'll do is we'll mark this bad boy right here so then we can get this thing adjusted a little bit later so before i before i post the file we'll have fixed that but let's uh call that one a day done okay so now let's um jump back and we will move along to the next one so um, not to be outdone after Arrow had their suspended coaster, Vekoma decided they were going to put theirs together. Theirs are called Swinging Turns, and uh, there were three of them, but they were all the same layout. So three of them all still exist. Um, they're just a little bit more uh, far-flung, except for Dreamcatcher here at Baba Janland in uh, Belgium. So this is uh, one of the early ones. And actually, we're going to use these... Uh, train. So these days it's got um, floorless trains, um, but back in the day it had had these, the uh, little airplane trains. Kind of a neat little look and uh, shows where the airplane trains came from that are in the um, in the base game. I believe this was still the time when there was some partnership to some extent. Uh, so this is the layout, definitely more compact, definitely something that fits into a much tighter space. Um, there are, um, like I said, there's three. There's this one that's in Belgium, then there's one in Thailand, and then there's one in uh, Japan. I rode this one, the Japanese one. This is Grandpa's Jet, which uh, means orca, apparently, uh, since it is whale-themed. Um, so it's... Uh, Neat. I always like this color scheme too, with the with the blue and the the uh, white. Um, so you can kind of see here. One of the key bits with this was trying to make suspended coasters more affordable. Um, so you can see how we have the couple of columns here. So like this column, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Trying to um, reuse a single footer uh, for a number of the supports throughout. So. Uh, Really, you've got a um, almost sort of three ring circus, I guess, <laughs> a uh, three ring um, layout. So if you follow the layout here, you kind of have this little S bend to begin with, and you've got a full helix here, which I noted we didn't really do in um, uh, in the arrows, but you will do them here. Then we're going to cross back over, turn around, kind of come back around and kind of work back and forth a couple of times. So you're going to go back, forth, back, and forth, and into the brakes. <laughs> it really is. We have the inverted coaster at home. This is the inverted coaster at home. So here's our uh, little whale face. I think it's fun. 
Um, but let's see here. There's some cool ride footage. So you can really see how it's all stacked. So that's going to be the key thing here. We're not going to be able to recreate this layout exactly um, as I've tried. Um, so it's uh, it's not the easiest one to do quite exactly just because we don't have uh, quite the same things that we would on others. But um, still, not, not too bad. Um, kind of see a little bit here where we're having the helixes that go in and out and down through the space. All right, so let's um, go back. Let's try and do this. This is almost one of those where I don't really start with the station necessarily. Um, you almost kind of start with the the rings of of rides, but we'll go over here. I'll go three off. Okay, so the uh, Vacoma ones had six car trains, so we're gonna stick with the six car trains. That's a good question. I I, I would guess that it's gonna be the Arrow or the Vacoma, but I I don't know. Okay, so these have a little bit of a dip out of the station. Or we will definitely hit those brakes again. I wanted to lift hill. No, Arrow never did. Arrow has the standard trains with some theming on them, uh, depending on which ones they, they were. Um, we eventually saw the floorless trains show up on uh, Vampire at Chesington, uh, but that's the only Arrow that I can think of that has the, uh, the floorless trains. Okay, we don't really want a huge, huge lift hill on this one. Um, we're going to do one flat piece before we start out. And then kind of give it a little bit of a, a push just because we're going to do a big helix to start here. Um, just trying to mark out where our helixes are. Please. So if we use one here, we can kind of come across. And say our next one is here. Then that would lead me to believe that we'll space two, and then the next one is going to be there. Give it a try. The early ones don't have to, or the, the top sections don't necessarily have to have a full lineup here, but it is good to have a little bit of a matchup. We're going from 14, now we're down to 10 here. Probably get a little bit of height recovery. I'm going to step out just a little bit on this side because we want this helix to do a want to go clockwise with this one Which means we need a little bit more distance if that's going to be the case because the idea is you go clockwise with the first one counterclockwise with the second one and clockwise with the third one then you're going to pull into the station from there. See what kind of speed we've got. Not a whole lot. Just fine. Let's see. Stick out just a little bit for the first one. We 
We're kind of like one off right now before we can really get into that. way that it's swinging like that we can actually put some more flat pieces in here because if you follow the real layout they really do have quite a bit of flat pieces uh, or at least uh, less less intense cornering and this will get us there it's not quite my favorite way to do it Ideally, this would be a little bit farther up, but we're already hitting the top here. Let's see then if we've got to go through and... Go up and do the same, and then we'll have one more here at the end. Don't think we're going to have the space to hit it. You sure don't. So that becomes that becomes the issue here, is that we need a little bit more space to make this work. Which means we can build backwards and get this a little nicer. So let's do this actually. Go ahead and build a shorter, tighter beginning. Stars. All right. And this is a little bit too high for the final piece in here, but we do want to get just enough space. Doesn't look too bad. But essentially what we're aiming for, if let's disable clearance checks for just a second, is we want to have This very last one be right on the bottom, since that's as far down as we can go. Since this ride is kind of meant that it's not going to, um, not going to hit the, going to hit the ground, or it's not going to adjust on the on the ground because the these rides not as portable layouts, but they're co they're kind of close. Um, they're definitely not built for terrain, even though Grandpa's jet is on some terrain. This is one of those where you might consider a bit of clearance adjustment playing with that. So that's going to be the problem here is that we're already up against the uh, the top. You can see Here we're already hitting the top, so this might be one where we just build from the uh, backwards beginning. Not quite enough space that we can come in there and adjust that way. That's a pretty interesting picture when we look at the overall here. We take out this top section. Probably want to go a little bit further than at the start of the lift hill. And as I jump back onto the database here real quick, it's um, it's, it is doing that. 
I find suspended coasters in this game to be one of the harder ones to build. Get that to line up. Ah. Not quite. Don't necessarily want to go out. And these what's the what's the average train speed off first drop for these designs? So it really depends on the type of ride. So for this one, you can see there really is no main drop. It's all just kind of these slow, slightly angled down weaving elements. I think you you don't really want to have a drop that's going to get you more than, say, I don't know, 55 miles an hour or um, or something like that. That, that could be a little bit much. But I, I don't think you, you can go too, too wrong with... Um, with speed on these guys, so long as you're not really kind of racking it through the corners. Like if it if it looks like it's speedy through the corners, it probably is too fast. All right, at this point, I'm just trying to get this to fit. Let's let's see what the minimum that we can do here is. I think it's that. So it's 11. But if we went up to 12, let us go on to 10 for the corners here. Okay. Odd. I didn't better than I expected it to. Okay, so really the only thing we've got to do here is just, um, yeah, I, I think it is. Um, it, it it really, these rides don't have to go very fast. Really, the only, the only thing that you want to do is get the ride swinging in the corner. So more than anything, it's just about how much cornering can you get the thing to do. Almost wonder this this is gonna be a lot. Bear with me here. All right, we're gonna see how bad that is. <laughs> Let's. Uh, I don't generally ever recommend the tight diving corners, just because these trains are large and bulky and pretty heavy overall. So. That's not something that you tend to want to do, but we're going to see what happens. Uh, and since this doesn't line up nicely, we're just going to rebuild the whole thing. Don't be afraid to adjust things in large part just so that it lines up nicely or looks nicely. Like if, you, if it gets so you need an S-bend or something to finish the layout, then... Fix it, I would say. Honestly, just adjust your layout so you don't need that to line things up. Oh shoot, we have five trains. We want five cars. We want six, which means I need one more piece here. There we go. Gave us six. Go ahead and paint this. I'm gonna do Grandpa's Jet colors because I like Grandpa's Jet. That aqua on the rails give it a little bit of a two tone look there. Something like that. All right, so let's see what uh, what this does. Because that corner is looking not ideal. This is gonna be a lateral G force test more than anything. Not a whole lot of speed through the top, which is okay. I don't need it, but 
Actually, not that bad. I think because we're moving so slowly, we can kind of get away with that. And now it's picking up some speed, which is good. Kind of seems like with this ride, right when you get going is when you're done. Uh, which, which to be honest, the real one kind of felt like that too, so it can't fault it too hard, I guess. That's an issue there where it stops so quickly. We don't quite want to bring it to a full stop. We want to want to slowly pull it down. So we're going to adjust that real quick. I don't that. Four miles per hour. That's why we definitely don't want four. So typically I'm going to start brakes depending on how fast it's going. Here it's not going to be going super, super fast. So I'm going to start with uh, 18 and then I will ramp it down to 13 with two, nine with two, and then four with the last one. And that way it'll slowly bring it in. I don't quite know how that ended up at four. Lift till we can keep sort of slow like this just because it helps us adjust. So when, when you would open a ride like this, if you're building this for your game, uh, go in and adjust the timing so that even once this one drops off the lift hill, you don't dispatch this one until it's most of the way through the layout because you really don't want to stop the lift or stop the coaster on the lift. Real rides will do that, of course, because that's the block sections, but it's just not something that they usually do. Usually they're set up to dispatch at the appropriate time when you don't need that. All right, let's take another watch and see what we're doing. It actually turned out all right as far as the real layout goes. Um, I recall having some trouble getting one of these to look decent the last time, but um, reasonably happy with this. All right, there it is. Get a little bit of that swinging and an easy pull into the brakes. And we'll clear our block section right here. Ding, and then when now we're gonna go good all right so that's that's not too bad actually we'll call this one the Vacoma swinging turns and then when you build your supports and everything you just have a, a nice beefy support column here in the middle um, and then stuff coming out from that and you could really even use the wall pieces at that point because it'll be a center the center point to all of these squares here Really, your main columns are going to end up being here, here, here. You'll probably have one out here for this guy. And there'll probably be some other ones in between, but not, not too bad. Okay. Cool, so we're, we're feeling good about that. Okay. All right, so... Hey, so good to see you here. Thanks for joining. So far, you've uh, you've just missed two. We've actually had kind of a slow start as far as this goes because I was screwing around with the arrow one for a little while, and um, uh, we still have some things to fix here where it crosses with uh, zero clearances on, but that's not bad. So anyway, we've got the two here, but now we're going to jump into some weird stuff for the next three, um, and I am all about the weird coasters, so let's uh let's jump on in all right so next one is the carry pro suspended coaster the bat flyer uh is their standard model there are not many of these left in the world actually there's really kind of almost none left in the world the um this is the ride and um was there a zero clearance issue on the vacoma one i thought we got that through we can go look afterwards. I, I thought we got that one looking looking all right, um, but uh, we'll, we can definitely take a look at it. So this is the the Carry Pro uh, Bat Flyer. It's a single rail suspended coaster. So this is what the the RCT one is: single rail suspended coaster, um, and it's got a vertical lift hill, which we're gonna have to fudge, unfortunately. Um, and for the most part, these just had a figure eight layout and that was it. What you're looking at right here is pretty much the entire or the first half of the layout. So you kind of go through this 270 corner, have a 90 degree corner here, have another 270 and then turn into the brakes. 
not a whole lot going on with this. You can see this is the entire layout here. There's just not a whole lot to it. So not, not bad, but uh, still a very low capacity, um, small ride. I saw this one at Nasu Highland. Uh, it was closed, didn't get to ride it. So fortunately we are out of, out of luck there. Uh, this one at um, Plop Salons uh, was actually moved here recently and is operating in uh, Indonesia now. So it was moved and last year it was kind of debuted as new, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot to these. We can kind of look at the, the video here real quick. Uh, see, Discovery Cove. Let's uh, take a look. So the this is one of the wishes that I would have is a vertical lift of some kind later in the in the game. So there you go on up. To be honest, I've actually found these vertical lifts to be really terrifying. Um, there's just something about seeing the end of the track on on both sides and um, just a fast lift hill too, and kind of kind of a little clunky, um, but it all works. There's never been an accident or anything on it. Coaster Force is legit. I used to actually work for Coaster Force back when I started as my enthusiast days way back in, uh, I don't know, late 90s, early 2000s probably. It's, uh, it's pretty rough. Yeah, you can hydro, but you still have to do the uh, the angle up and the angle down, so you lose a little bit of that. And you can fudge it with invisible track and um, lift hill pieces, or, or, or just scenery pieces in general, which we will do. But so there we go, going up. And honestly, that's probably the most exciting part of the ride. There's really not a whole lot to these. Um, this one was interesting in that um, you had the two side by side. So that's sort of a neat feature in that kind of a racing deal. They each take two people. Or, well, an adult and a kid. Or just one adult. A cute little ride, but not a whole lot. The problem is, with as slow as that cycle was, and you can see how long it took, look at this queue. Huge. I'm sure that they're in for an hour or more wait uh, in order to do that ride. So, not necessarily the way that you want to go as far as a park goes, but um, yeah, there, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, so, a number of these. Uh, there's also some other stuff that Carry Pro did. Um, this one I got to ride, which I'm pretty happy about. So this is the gyro flyer. Um, this is a essentially the same deal. It's got a lot of kind of back and forth, uh, back and forth stuff uh, just to get the corners going and the ride spinning. Um, so this is a four person um, spinning rotating ride um, at Skyline Park in South Germany. Um, not a whole lot to the layout. Again, not very exciting, but uh, Again, one of those that feels a little bit freaky, just because there's not a whole lot around you. Um, again, a vertical lift. Uh, I didn't spin very much on our cycle that we did. It was fun, but not um, not necessarily the most thrilling thing. Rotate that. So the other one, if um, we're going to look a little bit more... Uh, Fujikyu Highland initially had a coaster called um, Birdman way back in the day. Uh, now it's a um, inverted coaster themed to some creatures, um, and it takes a single uh, single person per. This one initially had flying coaster uh, or flying trains. So this was the individual like flying person uh, trains. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of that on the database here, but uh, that's where, or part of the, where some of the flying uh, trains came from initially. There's also was an indoor powered one that Carry Pro had done um, that also uh, had that. And they also did an aqua one on Hydra Fighter 2, which had water bombs and things like that. So um, this is a pretty similar layout to the gyro flyer. Anyway, uh, enough talk. We will jump back to the game here. Let me get to bat flyers again. Uh, Hamanako Nasu. 
because this one's gonna pull out. All right. We will jump on back. Pick up our mini suspended coaster. This is one of those rides that really can't do a whole heck of a lot in the game and um, not not the most thrilling by any means. Uh, but that's fine. We will do what we can do with it. You do at least get diagonals. Um, no steep drops, which is not surprising. But you at least get the diagonals. No block breaks either, which... Um, <laughs> put a core screw on it. That flyer extreme. All right, so what we're going to do to get the uh, vertical lift hill, let's um, turn on all of our fun stuff here. We're going to go ahead and change this to vertical drop coaster. Get ourselves a deep little lift hill. Probably too high to be honest. Bed lift hill. There we go. Now we're going to go back to mini suspended. Okay. Too high for support speed. Of course it is. Actually, yeah, that is. That's way too high. These are small, small rides. So really, you don't need a whole lot of height. So this is still really high, honestly, and we're going to probably spend a lot of time uh, just lowering the height. Really what we need on these rides are helixes. Um, that would be a big difference. Actually, that's probably still too high. Uh, yeah, backwards building may not be a bad idea just to get us at the, the right elevation. I feel like that feels right, though. We'll, we'll work with that. Then we can make a little bit longer layout. We don't need to recreate this fully. This one only has two clearances, which is, is nice, uh, because then you don't have to worry about the um, crossing. So you can kind of cross with these helix pieces. Or not helix pieces, but curved elements. You don't see a lot of these with up and down and that sort of thing uh, back here. No trains, single car, a single car per each thing here. This is the challenge that you'll have with the lift is you get a little bit of horizontal motion and then you'll have the lift, but it will stay uh, angled such as that. There's not really a whole lot you can do about that, unfortunately. They do lose speed pretty quickly, so you really have to keep keep punching in some uh, turn some hills to them. We'll give it a little bit of an uphill there, just to be different. Yeah, I feel like if you do one of these, maybe hiding the lift is, is the best idea. And these with with this kind of ride, the S bend actually works fine. Um, this isn't the most flowing of layouts, uh, but again. And these big corners, too, are, are totally acceptable for a ride like this. Drop here, which lets us drop two 
can still use two large corners here. And you can go through, if you want to simulate the brakes, you can put a uh, the lift hill piece. I'd probably say instead you put the lift hill piece invisible facing the other direction um, for these. So the ride itself doesn't have block brakes on it in RCT. In real life, it sure does. Um, you have the track, the lift hill, the station, and the brakes behind it. So, um, you know, it, it's something that I would probably say for this one, let's put it as a separate load and unload station. That way you can at least have that covered. And you can really operate not too bad so so really what i would consider is build this ride with um with a different ride use block brakes on it and then just turn it into the uh this ride even if you're using it as a dummy uh um dummy track how offensive will you find two stations one high with an entrance uh not at all actually that that is a thing that has precedent uh, there's a coaster that I rode in, in Japan at um, a New Ryoma World. It's an indoor, almost like a space mountain. And to get to the ride, you actually ride an elevator up that's got like a pre-show in it. Then you get in the ride, you ride it all the way down, and then you get off at the bottom. And then there's an elevator in between. And, you know, alpine coasters, which, like you say, that those are pretty common to do that. Um, I don't necessarily count them as coasters, but it is a thing that... Um, that they do so this is not a you know awful layout i suppose by any means it's just a simple layout there's not a whole lot to these um unfortunately you really while keeping realistic you can't get super creative with these because there's really not a whole lot of creativity behind it um the one that uh, a lot of people think of when they think of um of uh these guys is a uh is the one at universal islands of adventure um pterodon flyers um that one was apparently started by carry pro and finished by set point um if we go back to the database real quick i'll kind of run through this as another thing actually i should have done set point and maybe if we have time i will so set point's a company out of utah um they do a lot of other things like they make um a kong at universal or a number of those other ones with big heavy vehicles that have motion bases and stuff they make that um but they were famous for making these early uh, liquid coasters uh, which have the back-to-back -back seating and a canister of water that you can pull a handle on and dump water on the uh, theoretically unsuspecting patrons below and uh, those folks can fire back to uh, kind of a neat ride there was one at hershey and there was a pretty similar layout at uh, Carowinds. I did get to ride both of these, actually, which was kind of neat. They're pretty dull coasters, you know, as far as coaster goes. Uh, but the ride itself was neat. It's uh, It was a cool idea. Um, it's kind of understandable why both are gone. Um, Canopy Flyer is a non-water-based one. This is at Universal Singapore. Uh, this is the only one left of this type but there's a couple other ones too you've got um so hard rock park had a ride called slippery when wet uh initially and uh this looks suspiciously similar to hydra fighter 2 uh, the carry pro one but this is premier uh, and premier insists that it is indeed theirs although there are rumors that say otherwise um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's uh, Hershey was my home park when I where I grew up, and um, I went a lot, which helped <laughs> just suck it up and and go do it. Uh, yeah, slippery one wet, not exactly the uh, <laughs> not exactly the best uh, market research as far as that name goes. Uh, the other one, uh, let's see here. So we had that one, um, and. Uh, it on flyers here Kennywood is great you know it took for as long as i lived in pennsylvania up until the year 2000 it took me until 2006 i think it was to get to uh to get up to kennywood and i kind of regret not getting there sooner uh kennywood is a great park uh kennedy lake is also a great park 
really charming. It's got kind of that old school feel, which I'm a, I'm a huge fan of. Um, really, a lot of those Northeast parks are great. Um, I had done Canopy first in 2009, I guess, and then I went the other year in 2016 again. Uh, so it's always nice to get to those. Um, but anyway, Terradon Flyers is probably the only one that's got a really got a unique layout, and unique really isn't the same much. It's pretty much a giant oval, but it does have block breaks and things like that. Kentucky Kingdom is great. Definitely recommend going if you ever get the chance. All right, so let's uh, jump to the next one here without while we're already on the database. So this is the Riverton Gliding Coaster, of which there's only one. So that's that's this guy here. This is the Euro Coaster, currently residing at Prater Park in Austria, um, but it generally tours on the fair circuit. Sometimes shows up in London at um, Hyde Park, and uh, just kind of goes all around to Oktoberfest and all those kind of things. Very nice pictures from Mr. Fire here. So basically, it's a wild mouse that's. Um, Got some pretty suspect looking track work. Uh, you can kind of see the banking here from zero to a lot. Um, of course, we, we can't do the banking on uh, the game. Um, we're going to use the inverted hairpin coaster. Uh, again, like Sheep had said earlier, this is another one of those weird ones where um, it's kind of a struggle to think of how that ride ended up in the game, considering that there, this one has been around for a while, but there's only one of them. And from what I understand from people who have ridden it, there's a reason there's only one of them. Um, Golden Horse out of China, um, of course, did a knockoff of this at some point. Um, and there's, I want to say, three or four of those. Uh, slightly, well, not slightly, a not really different layout. Pretty much the same thing um, for this. But it's uh, it's definitely a bit of an odd, odd-looking ride. Um, we can't do it exactly because there aren't some diagonal uh, bits to it, um, and we can't, or there are diagonal bits to it, and we can't do that in the game, so we're going to just make the best of it, and I'm going to do one kind of like I did in, um, well, I did one in a park a little while ago. You have seen um, Faria uh, Flamingo, uh, the head-to-head -head park that I had done. That's the one that we're going to build, or something similar, because I'm not looking right at that one. Okay, let's find our inverted hairpin coaster. This is an odd, odd one. I, I, I want to ride it just because it's looks interesting, but I, I kind of at the same time don't want to ride it. You, you can. The challenge, Hydra, with the diagonal corners is this ride is already so compact that it just doesn't really make sense to, um. It doesn't really make sense to try and do that because by the time you get you get diagonal, it's um it's about as far as you can go. Uh, here's one that I, had, I guess I had done that one a while ago. Uh, actually, this I think this is the one from game. Uh, yeah, that I had done. So that's pretty much what we're gonna be building. Spoiler. At least this one's got block breaks, which is good. Um, I, I understand that a lot of people don't like um, using blocks on m wild mice just because they slow down the ride so much, which is fair. I, I do understand it, but at the same time, I like to use the block breaks because I like the proper spacing, and I'm kind of of the opinion that you might as well just make it work right, and then if you do, then it's fine. All right. So we're going to use the vertical lift hill just because, or the steep lift hill, but stretch it out just a little bit. Maybe not. We can Let's see. This one might be another one of those build backwards from. need three in this direction and you need the three so that two, three, four, three. So you want three in this direction so that you can go get two straight pieces before you get to the turns search of followers primes and views on bigfollows.com 
Sounds great. Don't recommend clicking that. <laughs> Of no liability if you click that link. All right. Um, let's see here. So the real one has a a little bit of a diagonal dip here. The challenge with this is it's a little bit. I actually probably want to straighten this out just a little bit more, just because it looks a little compact. A good wild mouse kind of has a little bit of a fat layout to it. This one's going to be relatively tall as far as this goes, just because we're going to do a lot of these back and forth. <laughs> a thick layer. All right, so instead of that, we will go ahead and just do a steep here, and then we'll do a shallow out that's gonna let us that look okay okay but since we can't do diagonal this one has and and the other wild mouse in the game has an odd um, ability to do diving corners uh, so we're gonna take advantage of that and do a uh, diving corner fine what we will do here now is go back through and ourselves a little bit of a straight piece again this is about getting things to line up underneath of the rest of the the ride columns just to make sure that it all it's about about level The real one kind of does our typical wild mouse type stuff. There's going to be another drop over on this side. Do that on this one. Actually, we can go down even further with this if we want to. Make sure that it's sort of a continuous movement. Uh, we'll put our block break here. One of the things we might have to adjust a little bit later is block breaks. And honestly, that may not be high, in, or that may be too high end need to give this just a little bit of a nudge I can't quite remember how well these maintain their speed Have kind of an abrupt stop there going from seven to five so that may hurt just a little bit but sounds like if you're hurting it you're done it right based on how these look in real life here's today's top tip make it hurt and then we'll uh I'll go yeah there's there's not a lot of uh, i mean it's sort of the standard supports just with a little bit of um Tab kind of on the end. I don't want to do this as a. I guess we can. Go one more over. That way we can do this as a nice wide corner here at the end. We'll put a little airtime hill in here because we hate everyone. 
And let's do a straight piece here. Not do a straight piece there because we are out of space. Turn, turn, and brakes. Okay, so just because I don't remember if I did the brakes properly, going out from the second station, you're going to do block break, regular break, block break, regular break, block break, regular break. Okay. So here's our unfortunate ride, at least unfortunate for the guest. Uh, make the thing as garish as the real one. Let's delete this guy. All right, let's see how it runs. We're going to go with... Start with five, six. See how, see how things set up. I suppose it's an interesting idea, and I can't fault Reverchen for coming up with interesting ideas. It just so far seems like all of their interesting ideas are terrible, um, such as the uh, the drift coaster that they had come up with with the seats that swing either way. Apparently that's terrible, so not not so good. All right, I think we're going to get our first block break issue here, if, unless this one hurries up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Didn't stop at all. Another one perfect? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Keep it moving. These blocks are spaced pretty well. And we are out of trains in the station, or cars in the station, so we could probably go up to... We can probably go up to say eight of these, eight or nine. See if it says how many euros got. Doesn't say, but out of curiosity, let's see if we can run nine on this without stacking. Once they get moving anyway. Not bad for not having a diagonal. I mean, we kind of made up for it with those diving corners in the middle. That's sort of kind of in and out. But not too bad. So I did put some breaks at the beginning of the, um, before the lift hill, just as sort of holding points, which is a kind of standard thing you'll see on a lot of, um, this type of ride, uh, a lot of those traveling wild mice things, there's a lot of those extra block breaks in there. So I think we're going to hold up just a little bit here at the end, which we are. So I would probably say eight is eight would be an appropriate amount. So we'll continue with eight and name this one as you do. Okay. So that is number four down. Those two went relatively quickly. Now for the fun one. Um, Belgian guy, are you still here? Uh, I have eight on that one. So eight, eighth one. All right. So I want to hear about this. Um, so this is one that I imagine that a lot of folks here probably aren't going to know about. This is Vertigo. It is a Doppelmeyer mountain glider. If you know Doppelmeyer, you know them from ski lifts because that's what they're known for. They build lifts. Um, they're a pretty big name in that industry, like one of the biggest. Um, they built a coaster once. It operated for, well, let's take a look at this. It operated from 2007 to 2008, then standing but not operating until late 2008. So uh, less than a year. Um, and basically what they did is built a ski lift of sorts with ski lift cars as a roller coaster. It wasn't necessarily fixed track. It was actually a cable 
Um, and you can kind of see how this is set up like a catenary cable um, coming down from these central towers. Very industrial looking, very, I don't know, um, terrifying we'll go with the maintenance car. Uh, let's see if we can get some decent pictures of this. So this is what the ride looks like. That's track still missing there. Um, the track flexed. Um, so the whole thing wasn't a fixed thing. Like these cables here were meant that the ride had some adjustment as it went up and down through the, uh, through the thing. So pretty, pretty interesting ride. Uh, the vertical lift twisted while it went up. So, uh, you could up the capacity for it. The ride, um, the ride actually had supposedly the vehicles had kind of an onboard transmitter that talked to the other vehicles and made sure that uh, they could apply onboard brakes if they ever got into an area where um, where something was stuck on the or another car was stuck on the track. So basically, we didn't have block brakes on this. The cars themselves were the blocks, um, which is not not something I'd ever buy if I ran a park. Um, uh, but, um, so you can see the lift there, the station here had a moving walkway. I don't know how often the moving walkway worked just because it was not super common. Lap bar only, um, kind of adding a little bit to the terror, perhaps. Some pretty cool, just mechanical bits. I mean, there was a lot to it and it was a really neat ride and I kind of wish it would have continued, but, uh, Wallaby Belgium, if I didn't say that initially, um, had some pretty cool looking stuff um, and, and the thing that you might not get and you can see how it swings out on this one um, I mean it, it swings pretty far out and this is the whole layout so it's not not a whole lot um, it's got a you know curve around this first hill curve on the second kind of a, a big dip in this final helix around uh, pretty cool little mechanism here uh, I think there is let's uh, see if they've gotten one here we go ash this new marker view damn oh, well i've already clicked it let's keep it muted so this is the the ride you can kind of see it's it's tall i mean the thing is really tall for one um and really, it's just these suspended cables. You kind of swing out on the sides. Drop down and up. This tower wasn't originally meant to be here, and I think that was something that was changed in the design. There we go. Nice big drop here. It was pretty cool. Uh, even after the failure, Doppelmayr did advertise it for a while on their website, but uh, it's no longer, no longer there. For obvious reasons, I think they they learn to stick to what they know best. Ski lifts. So pretty darn cool. Um, the, it's a neat ride. So I've seen a couple of these built in game before. BG, did did you do one of these? I, somebody did it in a head to head park a while back, and I can't remember who it was. That was it, Hard Rock Belgium. Yeah. So we're gonna. Right with a couple of different things here. So um, the way that I've seen it done, since you can't do the steep drops on this one, um, I had seen it kind of mixed with some um, ladder or the I want to say ladder track. So, but the um, the inverted hairpin uh, as the steep section, which I feel like you gotta suspend your disbelief a little bit to that. Um, let's uh, go ahead and build it with mini coaster track, and then we can change up what it looks like. What do you like? A weird ass coaster. Uh, all right. So let's um, 
We're actually... Put this with the... Your cars. I never remember where they're going to spawn. If they're going to spawn up high or down low. Down low. Okay. Um, all right, I'm changing my mind. We're going to do it with the mini suspended, then we'll go from there. Okay, so first first step for this is let's get our vertical. So I need 180 feet tall for this thing um, and 2,300 feet. So it's a pretty pretty big ride. Stick with that height right now, which is still going to feel massive with the mini suspended, but fine. Really, what's going to sell this ride, if you ever decide to make one in your park, is how well you do the um, the towers. Oh, didn't it? I guess when I go to vertical, it didn't want to keep. Good catch, though. There we go. Oh. All right. Now this is one of those rides where we really wish we could have the um those are mini suspended. Have the helix because we kind of need it to do things that you want to do with this. This one here. I'm gonna do it on this side now. Because <sighs> really, the, the ending part of this, which made it interesting, was that helix at the end. And because we can't do that with the mini suspended, you're kind of left without a whole lot to work with this is almost one of those that i would hope we could get a custom ride for even though it's such a niche weird ride uh, whenever the new save format comes around I had seen this done with, um, like I said, it was the inverted hairpin steepness. To do like a steep drop, but I honestly, I'm not sure that's going to look the best anyways, because the real one didn't have that kind of steepness to it. Close, are we? Not very. Oh, sure. Yeah, with the track dropping, absolutely. But I feel like the track dropping is one of those unintended, unintended terrifying side effects of the whole thing. I think that would be the most interesting thing for me riding that coaster, just because you have a sudden change in... In elevation um, really causing a lot of uh, a lot of speed change that doesn't look like it's gonna happen until the track moves and the whole thing does I think that track movement would be what be a little bit terrifying for me I mean don't get me wrong coasters flex if the coaster didn't flex that would be a problem because it would be falling down that's just simple structures but um, there, there's something about 
the ride just moving and as things go along that's just a little bit a little bit concerning it is i mean if you go back and watch videos of uh fiesta texas's uh, rattler coaster uh that was one where it had a lot of flex to it and it was fine it was a safe ride but it was uh it was kind of terrifying I remember riding that one, and you could feel the flex. Uh, this is a uh, Doppelmayr Mountain Glider, Zara. If you look it up on RCDB, uh, it's called um, a Vertigo at Wallaby, Belgium. Uh, not a lot of people know about this one anymore, I don't think. One of those that's... Uh, you'll find it on those YouTube compilation videos for, like, would you ride this crazy coaster sort of thing? Uh, which, the answer is yes, but... Not without some apprehension. And we know it did have those little, like, hill pieces in the middle. We can kind of do one of those guys here. Drop it down. Ah, blast. Yeah, that's one of those like super cool credits that uh, gets all the uh, other enthusiasts jealous. I'm jealous. I'll be honest. It sounds great. I would have loved to have ridden it. I mean, I've got my share of weird coasters and uh, rare stuff like Hard Rock and some of those, but it's uh, pretty jealous. It looks like a lot of fun. Now we're just going to try and get this to work itself out. Like it's almost there. Thought we'd be close. To... How bad does that look? Not bad. I mean, that, that's some of the problems with the hitboxes as far as diagonal goes. Quite fit exactly. That's fine. I'll just put a longer hill here. Since we can't do helixes, we're just being a little bit clever with how we can do this. Uh, do I want to do the corner, maybe? That's frustrating. Once again, we'll look at load unload and some amount of brake run here. They did have it was meant to run a number of trains. Or that was one of the big talking features of the ride. It's always weird to see coasters that that kind of fail and turn into obscurity because it's one of those things where, you know, somebody spent a lot of money on that ride. I mean, Wallaby Belgium spent a lot of money and they were probably out a lot of money uh, when it came to it. Um, even though, um, even though I'm sure that they were um, having some lawsuits with Doppelmayr to make this thing right. Thankfully Doppelmayr is big enough as far as a company goes that they could probably handle that. And I guess we'll just space out the chains a little bit. <clears throat> so yeah, not much to this layout. Figure there'd be tower one, two, three. Have a little center tower here, four, five, and then something down here to curve it back in. If we eventually get a mini suspended with 
uh, helixes, that, like the quarter helix, then that would change this for sure. So this is our janky coaster of the day. But I wanted to feature these three in a row, the um, Carry Pro, the Rubber Chun, and this one, because you really don't see them talked about very often. And I think they're pretty darn interesting coasters, um, or coaster types anyway, just because they there aren't very many of them, they aren't talked about very much, and they're not exactly mainstream or crazy, but they're they're interesting. All right, so we've got four more on the standard, uh, or the, the preset things today we might do some others also um, but this is around the time when we take our break so we will take our short little break here oh what crashed oh dang well that feels accurate for this ride um sure do they have brakes on this we don't interesting wonder uh No break just yet. Hang on. Let's see out of curiosity if I can. All right, well, at least now we have some block breaks and uh, some other breaks. So if you do that, then just come back in here, uh, going in the other direction. Turn on that lift hill just because it's going to look a little better. And do that. And if we make this gray, you can see the, the brakes a little bit better, or at least what looks like the brakes. So not too bad overall there. See if this one slows down any better than the last one. Downside of this is because the real ride had like an active blocking system. You could have multiple vehicles on the course at the same time, or theoretically you could. I don't think they ever really got that to work. Um, so this is probably more more accurate to the real thing. But there we go. Nice slowdown and ah, <clears throat> cool. All right. Well, not bad then. Okay, so now we're done there. Uh, so like I said, we uh, we have four more. We've got the B&M Flyer, the Vacoma Flyer, the Vacoma Stingray, and the Zamperla Valer. Uh, but as we always do, we are going to take a break right now So um, because we've been sitting for two hours. So um, go get up, get something to drink, get a snack, walk around, stretch, and I will be back in about a minute or two. Uh, I'm going to run some ads to help support the channel while we do it, uh, but then I will be back to it, and we will tackle these coasters here, and then any other ones you guys want to see, and suggestions, and all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so I will see you guys here shortly.
And we're back. Thank you guys for waiting. Hopefully you got interesting non-political ads. Uh, all right, so like I said, we are uh, looking at four more coasters. Now are the more interesting coasters that you're probably going to see a little bit more often, but maybe the reason you came to the stream. Um, B&M Flying Coaster, Vacoma Flying Dutchman, Vacoma Stingray, and Zamperla Valair. B&M Flying Coaster is next, but as we always do, let's go to the tape and check out RCDB. So... The first one of these guys was Air at Alton Towers, now Galactica, um, which was rethemed for the VR thing, which is no longer there. Oh, interesting. I don't. Who is Travis Scott? Should I know who that is? I don't know. But anyway. Um, the the feature that this one has that a lot of the other ones don't are the fly to lie sections where there's a section of track which is on your back so you have the um this kind of half half inversion and then you have a whole section that's on your back which is cool um you, here you can kind of see it here where you flip over you have this whole section here and then it rolls back again um air was pretty low to the ground um pretty kind of smooth easy uh, not super intense type ride, um, which a lot of people like. Um, but this is how the ride kicked off. Uh, definitely small because of the tree line restrictions at Alton Towers. But they kind of amped it up after that. The next one was Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Over Georgia, where they introduced the Pretzel Loop. The Pretzel Loop was this inversion, which looks suspiciously like a pretzel. Um, and was uh, probably the most intense inversion that B&M had ever developed. So uh, in the flying position, you kind of land on your head on this side as you go over and down, have that really, really intense push through your body, think through your chest, and then you come back up on the other side. Uh, so pretty cool inversion, and this kind of became the signature element on the pretzel loop since you can't really do this on an inverted coaster. Um, the physics just don't work for that. Um, but you can do it on a flying coaster in that flying position. Uh, so it's a pretty cool, cool design, almost like a somersault. Um, so Superman was the one to debut that. The rest of the layout was kind of mediocre. Um, it's got a lot of just uh, swoopy corners and not a whole heck of a lot else. Uh, this Superman was interesting in the fact that it was built onto a hillside, so you had a little bit of terrain interaction. There was this tunnel thing here, um, this final roll throughout, but it's a pretty short ride. Um, this is where B&M also debuted the double station, so having two separate stations with the switch track to keep up the um, uh, to keep up the capacity. Um, also because uh, Six Flags tend to suck at dispatches. It kind of needed it, even though they don't really use it that much anymore. Um, but, you know, interesting, interesting design overall. So this layout's been cloned a couple of times. Uh, one went to um, Six Flags Great Adventure, and one went to Six Flags Great America. Hydro, I know you are well aware of the Six Flags Great America version, since you're recreating it right now. Um, and it's looking very nice. Um, those, instead of the over Georgia version, have a single station and an eight car train rather than a seven car train. Uh, this was copied once more over in China as Crystal Wing. The only interesting thing about Crystal Wing is that it has this gigantic themed mountain thing around it. So the whole ride, even though it's a cloned ride, has this just massive drop it. This massive just structure around there. Uh, it's cool looking, but it's a standard coaster. And I do like the yellow paint job that they had. It was originally more... It's orange right now. Originally it was this sort of pale of taupe with this uh, purple. Not not quite the best. But yes, Jimmy. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. All right. Let's... Uh, we got to work through the history of these things. So we're... Uh, we're going to go to the next kind of interesting one, as far as I'm concerned, is Manta. So this one is a little bit my my baby. Um, 
with the really cool interaction here with the wing dip um, where you can stick your hand in the water. Kind of a short layout again. Uh, we do add a mid-course brake run here for the first time. Also has that pretzel loop and also has inversions, so four inversions in total. Then we get kicked off a little more as we get to Tatsu at Magic Mountain, which uh, put the ride up on the hillside in an absolutely gorgeous layout. Um, really, really, really like this layout where you've got these rolls over top of the mountainside. You wrap around the observation tower, have these kind of um, high banked uh, corners here. Giant pretzel loop off the side of the mountain that's not the first element. It's actually pretty late in the ride. Uh, so a pretty neat, intense, uh, cool ride here. The overall height difference on this one, I think, is what say? I wanted to say it was somewhere around 260 something feet. Uh, it was a pretty huge, uh, it's definitely in the 200s, but it's a pretty neat, um, neat uh, ride. So one of the best ones. And then we went over to China for um, a pretty unique one. That's actually still, I would say, maybe the most unique of the flyers uh, out there because it's got a vertical loop on it. Give us a good picture of it. Uh -huh. This one's got a straight drop. It's got a, a vertical loop, and um, it has a 540 degree roll, which is a an inline or like a zero g roll with another half roll to put you on your back for the loop before you roll out and through this uh, kind of hammerhead corner. That's an inline like half roll uh, back to the flying position, and then it also has two rolls in a row, which is something that B and M has really not done before. Um, so actually, this is the one that I think we're going to pick for the watch today for this one. And we'll get to Flying Dinosaur here in a minute, I mean, just because it's uh, worth checking out. All right. This one I have not been on, so it's um, definitely uh, one that's on my bucket list. It's a little bit of a challenging park to get to, even though it's near Shanghai, uh, but I haven't had a chance to get there just yet. So um definitely worth uh worth the look though this is one of my bucket list coasters i would say just because it's got so much more uniqueness to pretty much all the other bnms out there we get this great straight first drop which is a the only one uh flying coaster that does this little hammerhead corner here <laughs> you gotta work up not for everybody right away this is a great 540 roll though um flying coasters are intense though i mean they are pretty pretty crazy then we have our loop we're missing out on the pretzel loop on this one but honestly that's kind of okay with me because there's so much other interesting stuff here a uh, little water splash element Two rolls back to back. We have the one roll and the second roll, which just looks weird on a BM because it's the literally the only BM that does that. Um, then we're gonna pull into the brakes here. So pretty cool, pretty interesting. Um and it's um yeah, I would give that a close enough as far as vertical loop goes. Uh, but I saved uh the best for last as Mavericks had indicated so this is flying dinosaur this is at universal japan in osaka um it is pretty incredible i would say behind fury 325 this is my favorite b m coaster it is super super intense it is a really really good ride um, integrated pretty well into the theming and has some pretty interesting stuff too this one's got another one of those 540 rolls it's got a sort of half loop and it's got a pretzel loop also um, mavericks did a nice inspired by uh design of this one um welcome to post that link if you want to um pretty crazy ride uh the only um like coaster i know of that had a 12 hour line when it opened i think uh oh, redeemed puke let's see if they actually did it hang on oh, there they are they're all feeling pretty gross not uh not the best day to be a park guest here i forgot to extend our pathway and everything 
Uh, so yeah, if you have enough of the little channel points, the little, I think they're called arcade tokens that I changed the name to, um, you can redeem those <laughs> different things. But yeah, so 12.5 12, 12. Uh, hour, uh, okay, here's the all the sick guests from the, uh, that uh, was redeemed. Yeah, so that's, that's a good ride uh, I have that you've got there. Um, you know what? Why not? We're a little bit ahead of schedule, so let's ride this one, too. Uh, we'll do the Hakawa rides. Yeah, which I believe was leaked from testing. Great. Not the clearest of videos, but that's fine. So a little bit of a straight, but uh, pulls to the left first drop here, pretty steep. And right into this 540 roll element here, so this is the the one and then the two where you land on your back. Then you're going to pull out of that into this um, kind of half loop Immelman type element. Um, and right out of there into the pretzel loop. Um, a little bit of an interesting entry and exit to the pretzel loop. This is one of those ways that you could probably avoid having the S-bend in the game. Uh, then we have a little bit of meandering corners here, go around some of the buildings, uh, pretty big roll into a uh, helix. Well, the rides can operate in the rain. There's no real, there's no real issues with, uh, as far as uh, operating in the rain for B and M. As most parks just have rules regarding lightning and things like that. Um, American parks tend to be a little more. Um, strict on that than other parks but you know b&ms are can operate just fine in the rain especially for this one which is mostly magnetic braking it's things like schwartz coughs or other ones that have uh, uh horizontal brake fins that could get wet and slippery then that's that's an issue uh yeah i mean but the thing is that it's waterproof it's an outdoor attraction so it's it's got waterproof elements it's not like there's power to the the various bits and pieces i mean the station the station itself it's largely mechanical um you're going to have power pickups in the station that um will activate the the screws for the pins that lock the restraints um so yes that's going to be more um um that's going to require electrical connections and things like that but it's not it's not an issue outside when it's running um so it is plenty safe to be doing that. Alrighty, so let's uh, let's get to this. Now the question is what to build. Um, I think perhaps the obvious answer is a, uh, something like a uh, flying dinosaur. The challenge with these in the game is the S bend that's required to do the proper, um, the proper um, pretzel loops. So there's a way to do a pretzel loop where side here, if you come in at an angle oh, out of the way. Come in at an angle, drop the half loop down, and come back up. You can you can kind of exit on an angle or do something like this. I I don't really recommend it. I don't think it looks very good. Um, you can cross there, I suppose. I bet you can't. Yeah. But th this is a way to do a pretzel loop without having the S bend. But in my opinion, it just doesn't look as good. So we're going to avoid that. All right. So seven or eight cars um, is standard. We're going to go with the eight cars just to give it a little bit more oomph around the corners. A big looking ride too, so we'll uh come out of here. 
have a couple of breaks and then we'll engage the lift hill here. I'm actually going to do a steep lift hill. Where am I? Question. Maybe not. We can go with the standard lift hill. have to be cognizant about getting back to the station itself just because now we're so far from the station so no pre-drop on these unlike a lot of B&M inverted coasters where you're going to do something like this and then drop you're not going to do that on these need it the chain lift speeds up as the ride gets off uh, the lift hill but I would put a chain lift on that first kind of angle of descent there so we will do something like this just to Help us out. We can either do that or we can do a, a diving curve like this. And go. Well, thank you for coming. I appreciate you uh, enjoy, or enjoying the stream here. Uh, thank you for the subscription, too. I um, definitely really appreciate that. Uh, I will post the raw footage so you can catch the rest if you like, and uh, we'll continue to do these, whether next week or the week after. I'm not quite sure when the next one is, uh, but it will be coming up here soon, hopefully. So thank you for joining. All right. So we can... I'm going to continue on and do a, a single roll, even though I am a fan of the 540 rolls. And so if we leave this to the... Uh, where are we at? That's at... 22, we are higher than the lift hill. That's not going to work. That should work. Back to flying. Hey, all in one, how are you? Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, the flying coaster has actually been pretty requested by a lot of folks um, just because it's uh, it's a tough one to build. Um, I find this is honestly one of the harder coasters to, uh, to do in the game. Let's see how this one's going to turn out. I did like that yellow... Stick with that for now. Get a nice diving drop here. Kind of a quick roll into that. Let's see how fast we are out of there. That's about right. Ooh, good time. What kind of sushi did you have? Hey. So we can actually probably pull right into our pretzel loop over here. Let's see if we've got the the speed. Ooh, good. I see tuna. Thanks. I can be hungry now. Yeah, flying coasters are one of my favorite coaster types. Um, like I said, Flying Dinosaur is my favorite, but Tatsu isn't that far behind. Manta is great. I'm so happy to have it in my park down here, so I can ride it a lot. Um, Supermans are fun. Uh, I'm interested to go do Air, just because I've, I've not done it yet. Well, one of the things that you is good to pay attention to when you do these rides is um, the... 
speed of the train can look slow and that's okay i find that on flying coasters in general you kind of want it to look a little bit slow um you don't need to go too too fast on it so don't worry uh, too hard on if it's like really really quick and so let's see how this looks if we pull up on a pretzel here we can't can't get through it the top of the pretzel loop is definitely very slow yeah, fly looks excellent too. I'm not going to do one of those today because I do want to do a modern Vacoma stream at some point, or at least I'll mix that in with some others. Might be too fast, actually. Yeah, actually, a little bit too fast. Go back to flying coaster here. Fly. There we are. One more. You're right, Mav. Is, is the that's one of the things the S Pen does that is is kind of okay. I'm not I'm not real broken up about the fact that I have that. This may be too fast. Let's have let's see or too slow. So if you haven't really played with this, you might say, well, why can't you use the uh, large half loop inversions? Uh, the challenge is they don't work for the inverted um, ride types. Even when you merge them in, it just won't sit right on the train. Actually, that's not awful. I, I kind of am okay with that. A little bit slow, but that's kind of what we want. And these are a little bit um, off. I'll put that straight piece in there because they're not equal on either side. So it's not a, it's not something that you're going to see retro loop looking like an equal equal thing on both in both directions. So we'll uh, go ahead and do our right hand on here. I mean, this certainly does kill your ratings a little bit, but it's 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 one of those things where it's just kind of a uh it is what it is this is going to be too slow coming out i'm almost certain let's see yep just a little bit <laughs> yep, that is me. That uh, that is me. Good uh good find actually. Um but yeah, that's um I'm lucky to do some pretty cool stuff. That may not be a bad idea here with this. Hunt. run this again and see yeah we're very excited to get icebreaker up and running again or well for the first time it's, it's a good looking ride and we're we're definitely very excited to see it see it go all right so we will use the large ones but we are going to have to take out one piece of this first just to get what we want Level this out right there. Quarter loop. Oh, I guess I didn't take a piece. Maybe. Oh, added this extra one here. All right, multi dimension. Yeah, although buried as in in a trench, yes, underground, rarely. Um, but you you usually can hide it pretty darn well. Like I'm not, 
not too too concerned about that but we will put a nice little trench here oh i see what i see what you mean hydro see if we can go in this direction and get a little bit of interaction over top of this uh Oh, no, not flying saucers, flying roller coaster. Excuse me. In this case, we might be able to avoid that S bend if we like how that. Flat bit looks. There, I'm not totally convinced on it, but that could not, that could be a decent option. Let's see. Go back to multi dimension real quick. I'm gonna make this flat. We'll do two of these in a row. That may not be a bad option. Let's let's have a look and see. Because otherwise we would probably drop it straight out and then curve it around. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think where I'm more having trouble with is is this kind of mess here. Thumb's just a little bit clogged, I feel like. Got a nice look there. Trying to ease into that. Ease out of that. Ooh. I need to use the proper one. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I, I'm just going to drop straight out of the thing. All right, let's do S pen to the right instead. Back to Twister. Back to multi dimension. Order loop. All right, back to flying coaster. That's going to look a lot more flying coaster esque, I suppose. There you go. I almost kind of want to do a steep drop out of there, but be first how it's going to turn out. Left hand over turn to center. Yeah, maybe. I, I think the the challenge is that I don't necessarily want to cross I don't want to go out further than the pretzel. Kind of my biggest issue there is I yes, I did I did pull right into into that element here. 
Yeah, the I think the problem that I have with that one is I feel like if I if I go this way and circle around then I'm not gonna go around this guy. Like I feel like if if I was at the point where I could dip this underneath of the turn, um coming in, then I could dip under and then go around. But I know if I can. Let, let me watch this one one more time, and then I'll mock it up just to see if it's a good way to go, because it, it would get me back in the right direction, which is something that we're going to need to do here pretty shortly, because we're getting close to the end of the ride. Yeah, not too bad. Oh. A larger corner. I run into it, doesn't it? Pretzel and lie to fly parts. I don't know. I'm going. I'm kind of going for that um, Tatsu and and flying um, uh, flying Dino look, where we've got the pretzel here towards the end of the ride, sort of as a as a mid mid to late ride. Uh, weird just big element i think the problem that i have with doing the steep and then also coming back through the ride with the pretzel is that it's going to make it look a little bit knotted uh just because the steep one is kind of in the way but we can take a look and see Curious. Oh, it fits. <laughs> yeah, that that's my other concern is that man, this would be a, a pain in the rear to properly support. Um but actually what what I should do, let's go ahead and put in the other tracks just so that we can at least see what we're see what we're dealing with because we're building with it visible here did i put that in the wrong way oh darn it i did uh <sighs> coaster Okay. Not uh, screw this one up. Go. We have our nice looking pretzel loop here. Yeah, I don't know. My my problem with this is just the, the amount of cross through that I have. I see what you're saying. Coaster supports are fun, and I know I think we've talked about this hydro is that I I enjoy doing them. They're tedious, certainly very tedious, but at the same time, I think they're you're very rewarding to get done properly. Yeah. 
therapy supports. Way. Getting all sorts of trouble right now, aren't we? Probably go up with this one. That would get us through. Actually, it does. That may not be bad. I don't eat that. And that manages to stay relatively, relatively smooth as far as layout goes. See what kind of speed we're dealing with here. If we were to do a roll. Six is correct. It will be kind of fun to do two rolls. Yeah, it is going to be a really quick roll, which is why I'm concerned about it. Call this a diagonal. Oh, this is going to be fast. Ooh. <laughs> this. We will just ignore that whiplash. Instead, we're going to go for interaction. Imagine it. All right. This way. Breaks in this direction. Yeah, I'm thinking getting close. I like the roll over the station. I think that's a cool, cool design. Could just do another. I don't really want to go back in the other direction which I kind of would ideally do and wrap around the, put a helix around the um, M1 thing. I think this will go the other way too. <laughs> the wing dip. Gotta have the wing dip. It's really these these coasters aren't about inversions. They're more about just the and the swoopy corners sort of thing. <laughs> I could certainly simplify out the station a little bit more because it is a long station. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this because this doesn't need a double station for one. Could just say.
bring it into the brakes in this way and then just sort of wrap it around itself. Figure out the proper way to, to do that. Does if we finish it just one earlier. Right. I'm actually pretty happy with this layout so far. I mean, assuming this ending bit comes together at some point. There we go. That way we don't have to use the small turn, which I'm not a huge fan of. And we kind of ease down and in, which I kind of like easing down into the brake run. So no double station, but that's fine. We doesn't need to be at a park that requires one. Uh, let's get our second train on there, though. Should have probably fixed this um, Immelman piece here with a uh, steep lift, also, but all right, or with a steep flat. Oh. This looks pretty good. I like making flying coasters because they, they usually take a little while. Actually, this is one of the ones that has come in at pretty good pacing uh, in general, but they're tough coasters to make, and usually it's not a um, it's not an instant thing to get one to look right. And Pretty happy with how this one's turned out because of, in spite of that, I suppose. Um, I don't think I would change a whole lot on this one. Um, yeah, I, so I'm pretty, pretty happy with this guy. It could be a future design, perhaps. If anybody wants to uh, take it and theme it, feel free. All right. Done. That one felt like it took a while, but I feel like it was worth it. Okay, let's uh, let's jump back. Because now we're going to look at the original flying coaster. Uh, we kind of skipped this by starting with the B&M, but I like the B&M better, so that's why we started there. Um, this is Stealth. Stealth was the world's first flying coaster. Well... Modern flying coaster, I suppose. And uh, Vacoma built this one. It's um, 
Started out in California's Great America, got moved to Carowinds, uh, where it had a Star Trek theme for a little while, and now it's um, now it's there as Nighthawk. Um, but originally it was this kind of stealth pilot themed, like a pretty cool looking ride. I think um, I, I always liked the red spine with the white rails and ties. I thought that looked good. Um, there weren't enough rides doing that sort of thing. The big thing here is that a lot more of this ride happened on your back than on your stomach. So you loaded sitting upright, laid back down, you went up the lift hill on your back, and then you rolled over. Uh, this had a lot more fly-to-lie and lie-to-fly inversions. Um, it had a loop, uh, just a traditional vertical loop. It had a couple of corkscrews. Uh, if we follow this to Heroines, where I think we're going to have some better views of it. It had sort of a, a pretty big layout, but um, here we go. Good shot of it. So you can see the lift hill on your back. Flipping over for the first drop, you have this sort of hammerhead element here. And you have the, the fly to lie. And takes you into the loop. Then you go back to flying, fly for a second, then you roll over again. Go through two standard corkscrews, and then you end up on your back. So that was the prototype version. And there were uh, there was just one of those, and then they uh, created a larger version, kind of an extended layout, I suppose, and uh, built this. And kind of at first glance, it's going to look pretty similar to the other one, uh, but there's a couple of differences here. So once you landed on your back here or on your stomach again, you stayed on your stomach until you got to the corkscrews. Those core screws were simplified into inline twists, uh, which were a much better ride experience. We added this final helix here, and then one more uh, fly to lie as you hit the brakes. This also threw in the double station. Uh, the idea originally for Vacoma Flying Coasters was that you would recline on the lift hill. You would back out of the station while the seats were upright, and then as you went onto the lift hill, the seats would just slowly back its way up and uh, lock in place. Um, while the mechanism was still there, while the ride was um, here at, X, at uh, Geauga Lake as X-Flight, the, um, the whole thing got uh, moved to uh, Kings Island as Firehawk, and they took that out of the ride. So uh, that ride is now scrapped, unfortunately. Well, kind of fortunately, it wasn't very good. Um, the only one of, those, of these two, you can still ride Nighthawk, the original, the only one of the two other ones is here at Six Flags America as Batwing. Same exact layout. You can see those inline twists at the far side here. You got this uh, nice helix here. But are you were you a fan of Firehawk? I, I will say I liked this X Flight. I had a really good time when it was X Flight because all the mechanics and stuff for the seat reclining were in the train, so the train was a lot heavier, so it moved better. Um, my rides on Firehawk were always less good. And I just really don't like the restraints because it kind of pinned it on your your um, your uh, stomach almost. So you kind of had this almost bend um, where your uh, your ankles were pinned, your chest was pinned, and you're sort of just hanging down. Um, it was not not the most comfortable of rides, but um, we'll we'll take a ride. Why not? Uh, we'll do. So I've ridden all three of these. Um, they all vary in quality. Um, I would say the original is not very good. Um, the uh, Batwing's pretty good. Batwing's, I mean, well, pretty good as far as this goes. Um, like we said, X-Flight, I liked. Firehawk, eh, not so much. It, it was okay, um, but I'm not trying to see it go. I'll take Orion over Firehawk any day. But it's always sad to see some of these go away. Um, so there was really only those three layouts. Um, they were all um, sort of the same kind of design. Vacoma did offer some other layouts, uh, including a family flying uh, or a family launched one um, and a regular launched one. Some other things kind of way back in the day. I've got some brochures on those uh, from Vacoma at IAPA. Um, but it was... Um, Nobody, nobody bit. I think they were pretty expensive, and then right around that time after they debuted these, 
Uh, B&M came out with their variety, which was a much more refined option and I think much more comfortable overall. Lower maintenance, higher reliability. So it's not too, too surprising that the Vacomas didn't really last um, as far as um, having the, the same coverage as some of their other rides have had. It was a little bit trippy going up on your back, also staring into the sun if you catch it at the wrong time of day. But you come off the lift hill, and this is this is what, in my opinion, makes these cool, is the flip onto your stomach, and then suddenly you realize just how high up you are as you drop through this first first drop. You got the nice uh, element here. The containment wasn't the best, so you kind of sloshed around a little bit in the restraint, I feel like. So every one of these lie-to-fly elements was always a little bit uh, jerky, I suppose. You kind of flopped around. So you had that loop, which was fine. And you went back here, kind of rattled around a little bit, and then stayed in that flying position all the way through to these rolls. And then the rolls just kind of continued that corner one and two up into this diving helix, which was actually pretty good because you were close to the ground. Then you would take this final roll here and shoot right into the brakes, right there. So interesting, um, double station two, like I said, double station not exactly one of the most used, um, although these do have some pretty, pretty darn slow loading times, but let's, uh, let's go back to the game here, and let's take a look. was the laydown coaster as far as RCT calls it. I could see that because you kind of come out of the, the helix and then you continue that same roll even though you've already flattened out. I can kind of understand where you're coming from, Hydro. All right, we'll stay relatively low on the ground. Let's Let's try and get our double station in this time around. Uh, six car train, pretty standard. Six cars station here. I'll put one piece at the back just as far as access goes. That way you can get a pathway in and out. Then we'll go here. Put a couple of brakes before the lift hill. This is where your transfer track is typically going to be. I uh, will go up. I'm going to try and do something maybe a little bit differently. I have one that I really like, um, and I'm not sure I can recreate it all at once because it was a little more in, a little more dynamic, I suppose, than the current um, or the existing layouts, but a little interesting, I think. Actually, maybe a little bit big. Back it down just a little bit. That first thing is really just the roll. Where you really kind of dive down into the deepness of the whole thing. Oh, I too long on the station. can drop under there pretty easily. See how that looks as far as speed goes. Nice first drop. Sort of ease away through here. I kind of want to see how this 
steep twist looks. I'm not usually an advocate for using this. But let's see. For me, usually the steep twisting element is a first drop element only, and then after that you pretty much ignore it, just because it feels a little bit extreme. But we're going to stretch it out a little bit and see how this looks. A little bit slow, perhaps, coming up off the, off the top. Not bad. You get a little bit of interaction here with the patient and everything like that. This is another one of those where you don't have banked climbing and diving corners, and it would really be nice to have those. That's not bad. We'll go to this side so that we can easily this. Bank turn wear hydra. Missed that, sorry. Mm. My issue here is that I don't really want to keep going in this direction and doing square elements. I feel like we got to cross back over at some point. I almost wonder if it's possible to... Big turn up where the steep turn is. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. You know, maybe that's better. Because that's going to let me go a little more compact as far as this goes. Because then I can go... Unroll this, roll it in the same direction. I bury a loop in here. I can actually. And I don't dislike that loop placement. Okay, yeah, I'm feeling that. Well, you guys are too. Now it's just going to be a matter of figuring out kind of what to do that doesn't hide. Because the, the one that I had done that I really enjoyed... Um, I actually threaded that the loop again, but I don't think I can do that here just based on all the other kind of crap I've got around it. I'm going to have to go back diagonal, I think, once you finish with this. Because really, the 
I find I'm finding more and more that the flow of an RCT coaster is really just how well diagonals work within your ride. Darn. Right in the way. If I back it up any. Up any. I'm feeling good about where it is so far. Kind of feels like the right sort of layout. Could always. Trying to avoid staying on your back for too, too long. And I'm also kind of trying to stay away from having another roll that's right underneath of this one. Like I could easily just roll this again, but it, it while sometimes the stacking looks okay, I feel like maybe it doesn't here. I don't know, maybe it does. Does that look stupid? Okay, let's, um, here we could take this through here. Right in the way. Again, just getting a little bit screwed with the facing of things. It was like good. I I don't really want to get this out of line, I suppose. Maybe I do. I guess it doesn't really matter. That will afford me to more accurately get our ending lined up. These do one helix up here, and this lets us get to our double rolls. Or dropping down and around. That's not too slow. Feels about right. That's the only part that's in the way. Ideally, I'm looking for a helix. Some type. I can sneak it through there pretty well. Or are we away? One, two, three. I 
could pretty easily just do square square ending to the thing. Most elegant. Also not bad. What we'll do is level this out so then I can go straight into the brakes. Little compact layout. Not too bad. Or, no, let's say, or we could do a diagonal. Doesn't quite line up how we would want it. But we this we will do diagonal. We'll drop off our double station once again. We continue to hurt capacity, but that's okay. Five blocks. Nine, thirteens, eighteen. Okay, that's not bad. Kind of carries a lot of the similar elements to the real thing in, um, while still managing to be a unique layout. What do you guys think? Um, other red colors. Yeah, it's not. Um, I think it could maybe be refined a little bit more, but not not bad on the whole. Add gray supports. Gun metal look to it. There, not bad. Happy enough with that. Let me see if I have saved the one that I quite liked. I don't. I can always pull that up just a little bit later. But let's uh, keep on motor in here. Actually, you know what? While we're while we're here, let me pull up the one that I had that I was a fan of. I think it's this one. Well, maybe it's not this one. Oh no, here it is. This is the layout that. Um, I had done which is a little more extreme it's a little bigger it's definitely more of a uh i guess a little more intense perhaps but i was i enjoyed the threaded loop um and uh, the way that the whole thing worked uh through there so i was pretty happy with this one but i think i'm equally happy with how the other one turned out
there's another example of something you guys can do. Anyway, back to our main stream. All right. Seven down, two to go. So the next one that we're going to look at, uh, let's jump back to the database here real quick, is the Vacoma Stingray. This is another one of those one-of-a-kind rides. Uh, only one of these was sold, uh, and it went to uh, Sujo uh, Giant Wheel Park, um, which unfortunately is now closed. Uh, the fate of this coaster is unknown. I've never seen pictures of it getting scrapped, but it hasn't shown up anywhere else, so I'm not really expecting we're going to see it again, which is a shame because it was a pretty unique one-of-a-kind ride, um, as you can see. So this was launched a little bit after the first Flying Dutchman coasters. And the idea was more of a compact, um, not portable model, but just a smaller flying coaster footprint for tiny parks. Um, and it kind of had a pretty cool little layout here with some shared supports uh, through the whole thing. Pretty elegant uh, support layout, especially for the fan curve, um, which is pretty neat. Um, so I was I was a fan of that. <laughs> Laying down on the job, I like it. So if you're trying to rename uh rename it, uh you have to redeem the channel points for that. Um to rename it. Let me uh where did I put it? Have to use just follow the instructions when you get the thing, and then just use number one uh for it. So have this one named for one, so I think here. Let me see if it works. Uh, da, 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 da. name a ride. Oh, so, one, two, test. There we go. So you can kind of name it, name it what you want. Uh, since you, uh, I will go ahead and change it now since you did redeem that. I'm a fan. That's that's clever. If you guys want to name any of the other ones, we'll call the Arrow one. Call the Vacoma two. Harry Pro will be three. River Chan will be four. Mountain Glider will be five B&M flyer will be six anyway back to our stingray here so the cool thing with this one is that it's got this vertical lift that starts you on your back and ends up putting you onto your stomach um, before this kind of first diving drop so pretty cool looking ride uh, the idea again for this one was that it would recline on the lift hill as it went up I'm not sure they ever got that working either. Um, it's kind of a complicated thing to do while you're running it since you got to get a check that the thing is going to be in place before it gets off that certain point. But neat design, anyway. A pretty cool looking ride. Let me see if they've got a POV. Uh, looks like no. Uh, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, I'm sure there is one out there, though. But a uh, pretty neat looking ride. Let me see. Here's a good shot of the thing after it's had uh, the area built up around it. So neat the way that they settled it out over the water uh, through that fan curve. That's a pretty cool design, I think. And pretty much almost a, a bottom or a uh, vertical first drop is kind of special, I think. So it's got a couple of little corners and everything else. So oh, it's uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, so you got your vertical lift, vertical drop, this fan curve, then an Immelman type roll, uh, a couple of, of turns, and then you have the, your uh, diving uh, helix here that um, has brakes on it the whole way down. If Zara is still here, that's a there's a shoestring for you. Is uh, shoestring it so that the ride starts to slow down on the the uh, Immelman. Or a dive loop, I guess that would be. All right, so 
Let us go to lay down coaster again. There you go. Ah, thank you. The uh, not a theme park review, is it? Oh, it is theme park review. We're gonna not do that. <laughs> so. I will find another one at some point because I'm sure somebody's mirrored that by now. Um and we'll we will take a look at it, but I will I will find one and I will post it when I post the video here uh on YouTube. Alright, let's take a look. Okay. Um alright, so first things first, we are going to get ourselves a lift hill. And we're going to go vertical with it. In order to do that, we're going to need the multi dimension coaster again. It's kind of a, actually, almost a tight lift upwards. But I think we're, we're safe to do, do this. And then we can do a. Well, you can do a vertical drop if you want on one of these, I think. But it ends up looking a little awkward, as far as I'm concerned. Let's leave it at that. Go back to our lay down coaster here. Do a right here. The the big thing about this is trying to be compact. The hard part about that is making it compact while still getting all the elements in. Uh, so one of the things that we're not really going to be easily able to do is that final roll uh, because of this guy that's in the way. Unless we shorten it up and make it... Because um, like you could do a half loop coming down, but you're in the way here. That's the problem. Right. I wish there was a way to make more elegant, um, Diagonals that fit in that took up less room. What we might end up doing is uh, something like that. Not quite the look that we're going for, but that's okay. The tough one with this is trying to make sure the layout is not too fat as far as width goes, but still ensuring that you can kind of fit in all the elements. Mention. All right. Oh, shoot. Got to change cars. So the real one has two cars, two car trains. Um, that's probably not going to be enough momentum for us, but we'll give it a try. See what we've got. Oh, did we forget to put the... He sure did.
We also made ours pretty tall, which could be an issue once we get around to it. It's actually not that bad. These corkscrew into curving elements. This is about the only coaster where I think you can kind of get away with doing that and having it look okay. But here we are. I'm not yet convinced that it looks okay, however. Bad though. Interesting idea, nonetheless. Just, I think, one tile short of getting this to clear. Because it does it for our straight one there. This is definitely a tough one as far as layouts go. Just trying to be compact while still fitting in elements that make sense for this ride. Because I really want to be keeping it within uh, this general space. I wonder if maybe we don't do our curve just yet. to do something like this where we wrap the lift hill. See if there's speed for it. There is. Hmm. That's true. Yeah, Wisp was nice. you want to link that for folks uh, who may not be familiar with it, feel free. Now I think we can do this order loop of sorts. Sorts of fun. <laughs> I'll take that. Thank you. I have not got a chance to plug my YouTube yet. Never miss a chance. All right. Good try a element 
out of this. Turn that around. Then it's really just Well, it doesn't quite give us the height that we need. My hope then is that we would have just enough to take care of so it doesn't give us quite enough. Pretty simple layout overall, I think, which is what makes it, in, in my opinion, so challenging to do this type of a ride. And your clearances certainly don't help things either. If you don't mind the S bend at the end, this works fine. But it's just a matter of trying to figure out what the better, if there's a better way to do that. Which there may not be. So we can I'm going to do this even though I'm not totally satisfied with it by putting the S bend here at the start and then the brakes would be on this on this piece coming down so it's a little bit perhaps but Is a little slow coming through there. Do that roll not my finest uh, design. Try this time. Loop. Where loop? There it is. There's an attempt at a stingray. Not, I think the quite the best, especially because of the S bend. I'd like to try and get away from that, but um, you know, like older guy said, you can check out that review that I did of his park that's got one in there and I think did a very nice job at it.
build in our dummy track here just so they can at least see what we're doing. Man. Dang. That quarter loop out of that. Weird. Very weird. There it is. Oh, no worries. What uh, what film did you go see? Right. All that. Yeah, I think. Well, I've heard that's good. I haven't seen it. I hear lots of people say good things on it. So this is one to review or to revisit, and I'm sure I will here at some point just to get a better, a better design. Uh, we we kind of hit the highlights, um, things that I would properly or probably change on this are the uh, uh, slow inversion right here, and then also the the required S bend here just to get everything to line up. So. Um, not not the finest of those, but you know, in the interest of time, let's go ahead and move on to our final one. Um, we left the worst for last. This is the Zamperla Valer. Amazingly, they've sold a bunch of these um, because I guess they're cheap and parks don't quite care about the reviews sometime. But this uh, beautiful picture here kind of belies the actual nature of this ride, which is super unpleasant. Um, so these are uh, basically kind of cheap flying coasters, a little single car vehicle uh, that you have to climb up into, climbing a ladder essentially, um, to get into a car that then kind of clamshell folds you into it and takes you up a spiral lift and then through a couple of, uh, of rolls and uh, curving corners, uh, none of which are particularly good. Um, I've ridden, uh, uh, let's see, three of these, I suppose, and uh, none of them have been terribly good. Um, yeah, sort of the wild mouse of flying coasters, because the wild mice are usually pretty decent, um, and these are less so. Let's uh, have Coaster Force take us on a ride, and... Give it a good shot. For added effect, um, smash your head against something when you go through the elements. Here you are in your little cage of sorts. It's not the not the nicest looking car for one. Uh, the ver the uh, perfect lift hill is pretty cool though. Um, this is this is neat. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, they're rough. Um, they're one of the bottom tier coasters as far as I'm concerned, and I think they're my wife's least favorite coasters. Uh, so not, not generally well received. Uh, this one of all of them, this one here, Coney Island, is probably the best of the three that I've done. The worst being the one in Canada's Wonderland which was just horrendous. Um, oh yeah, those Horizon Lock POVs are pretty cool. They're really interesting to see. It just kind of messes with your head a little bit. Oh, actually, this is the Horizon Lock POV. Shoot. Hang on. Well, I like this, I want to see the one that's actually shows you the whole thing. Uh, let's see here. See the 361.
spin around. Okay. Those are cool POVs, though. All right, let's see if this is any better. Yeah, you can kind of see how it knocks you around a little bit. The rolls probably being the smoothest part just because they're a continuous roll. Uh, it's all these directional changes into the banking, like this right here, where it just kind of snaps and pull back in the other direction, snaps again. A couple more block breaks in here just so that they can run multiple cars. Uh, snaps a couple more times here. Burp there. A little bit back and forth. These are built on a space frame, so these are made to be portable. Actually, you know, if it wasn't an unpleasant layout, it's a decent portable coaster layout. Like, I mean, if it, if it wasn't a terrible ride uh, experience, the, the layout's pretty cool. Um, but it is a terrible layout, unfor or a terrible ride, unfortunately. Um, so it's not, uh, not the best. But we're going to... Take our stab at it, I suppose. Give it the college try. Let's jump back and take a look at. Yeah, so it's kind of the the. It's like your whole your whole body kind of shakes around. Actually, before we go back, let me jump back real quick because I want to see if I can find a picture of the seats, a good close up of them. All right, so. This is how you get into the thing. So the thing folds down. This is a moving walkway. Um, so you walk into the moving walkway on the blue dots right there. You literally climb up the ladder that's on the bottom here using those little handles that you see right here. And then you kind of slot yourself in there. And at the end of the, the, uh, the course here, there's a little ramp that essentially just the ride slides up the ramp and locks into place. So you can see this kind of caged bit that's on the back. And then your area that you look through on the front. Here's the here's the little ramp that pushes you up. These are the handles that you grab onto. And then you have this little cage on the front. And then your feet kind of sit on whichever rung you land on based on how tall you are here. Um, and then you just hang on for your life, I suppose. Um, the let me see if there's a better image. Uh, let's see if Playland got a decent shot. It does not. And this Wonderland should. Here we go. You can kind of see the see the look there. Yeah, the I mean it's, it's done to be cheap. It's done to be quick. And I will say these are the fastest moving as far as load goes coasters because they just kind of go in and go through as long as they don't have to stop the train uh, which you know they do more often than not but the challenge comes in there is that it's a hard molded plastic seat and the ride closes to one closure uh, you're just fully enclosed so you can't get out but it's one closure whether you're big whether you're small so you're gonna rattle around a little bit unless you're you know in I'm a larger guy, so I'm probably going to rattle around less than like a little kid would, perhaps. But um, there's a fair bit of movement uh, as far as going through those rolls. Um, so it's not it's not a great great design as far as just rider containment goes, just because you can't really fit uh, or you can't really fit. It's not a one size fits all ride, but it's presented as such. Definitely not not the best thing. Since we don't since we don't have this track style, we're gonna go with the uh BM flying. Yeah, it kinda is. It's uh it's not the best of uh of look. Alright. Look at options. So what we probably want to do is Left hand turn into left till. Back. Direction. Actually, first there's a brake run.
You could probably also get away with doing the Vacoma um, track too if you prefer, but we'll stick with this guy. And let's see, just using the of the ride here what the best way to do this it actually does go up before it turns pretty tight corner there and in the other direction we can go ahead and select our train which will do just a single car vehicle of this the hazard here is that it's going to lose speed really really quickly i've seen these done in the game a couple of times and they're uh, they're definitely harder to do, um, harder rides to recreate. Whether you're going for a recreation or not. We're not going to go for a full recreation. We're just going to go for something pretty well inspired by. And let's see if we can get back to 11. I think there's another break on this side. There is okay. There is. It's just a little later on. A little bit of a dip here. Back up. Really don't want to go past that corner there, so we'll just stick with sort of these weird, like, banked elements. Maybe we'll pass on those in this one. Let's us do diving corner of sorts here. And so now there's no no third roll. It's actually more just like a weaving back and forth kind of thing. Um which can't quite do the same here. It is a good pier coaster. Honestly, I would, I would not be surprised if we see some folks in the DKMP contest to go in this direction.
that. Make this a little bit weird. Uh, it was an interesting contest. It was not my speed necessarily, just because I, I tend to prefer the realistic stuff, and most everybody's um, uh, layout for the um, for the switchback coaster weren't realistic. So I, I don't. Um, I mean, it's not not the fault of that. Just that ride type lends itself to be a little more or a little less realistic, I suppose. So. Uh, that was kind of where I was sits at it is, or I would sit at it. Like it's decent, but it wasn't my, it wasn't necessarily my kind of thing. Um, but I, I was pretty impressed with what uh, a lot of the people did. Like, there's some pretty darn cool stuff in there. Like I will, I will do a video on it. I just gotta find the time for it. The biggest issue right now is time. Actually got a couple more recordings ready to go, which is, is good. And I think there's another break around here. Break is it's done. Bank the other way so then we can bank back. This is one of those rides that doesn't lend itself terribly well to RCT, so you kind of got to fudge around with it until you can get a decent looking layout. Alright, let's lock break there. Ooh. Lock break here. Ooh. That direction. Lock break here. Then let me. Pull this out. Little block break here. Yeah, that that's the other thing is it's not a great looking ride to begin with. It's not not something you really want to buy for your park. Oh. And you can do that then. All right, let's see how need some more blocks in here. It looks like because the thing is that this ride is, is far wider than the real one is I, I don't think you almost want to go more than say seven across which is um having your your outrun you figure you have your outrun and you turn around which is four if you do a tight one and you turn around again and come back i don't think you really want any more than than that um, and then if this is your turnaround of sorts here for your station, it's just not. It, it's a well, it's a lot wider than I think it ought to be. But I mean, hey, it works, and it's a ride. I don't think it's. I wouldn't, depending on what kind of ride you're you're making or looking for for your park, this is not the one that I would choose unless you're going for sort of a dumpy, almost down and out park. Or North Korea this is one of the few. This is the only modern coaster in North Korea. A Misho rides there, but well, that and not spinning wild mouse, but still, it's not not quite the the winning combination I think most people would like. Yeah, the North Koreans growing up thinking that uh, that's a coaster are not going to be fans of uh, a lot of these rides. So that's Valair.
clear that one off. All right. There we go. 20 minutes to spare to our general four hour stopping time. So, not bad. I think we did pretty well here. So, this is number nine. And this one's number eight. Let's take a look back at the. Actually, he didn't. This is the first time that we haven't had to take a shot because I forgot to change it back from uh, the database to RCT. I was on it this time. Like I was actually thinking about it, making sure that I remembered. So thank you. Um, let's go back and just take a spin around the rides that we do have just to see what we ended up with. So first off, we've got our, uh, got our Eagle Fortress. Oh, geez. I'm the mover now. Dark ride. Okay. Two trains, seven cars. Lock. Action. How did I not to set this up back on? Anyway. So. Yeah, I wish that they would correct that. I really feel like that can't be too hard of a thing to correct um, from disabling vehicle limits, but who knows? Maybe it is. But anyway, um, there is the, our arrow coaster, which is based off of Eagle Fortress. A little bit messy here at the end. Uh, I kind of like this crossover portion here, but I don't like the rest of it. So um, we're going to play with this and... Uh, when I post the download for this, I will post a, or I will have changed this by that point. Although, actually, you know what? We've got time. Let's just do it right now. While we're at it, might as well, might as well fix it up, make it look a little nicer, perhaps. Back to number one here. I think what I want to do is cross these over each other. How many more Hacked Ride tutorials do I have lined up? So have not recorded any new ones just yet, but I have um, I have rides made for um, ba -ba -ba. one two. Three, four, five, six rides are done and ready to go. So it's just a matter of getting those done, and then once they are done, then I can record the video for it. So pretty, pretty close, or, or we're getting getting there anyway as far as rides go. Not too too, or, or we got a fair amount coming, I suppose. All right. Kind of like to climb into the other direction diagonal. Not going to cross there. Could just wrap it around. Figure out a way to that line up. Ah, oh, I'm off by one or two. One or two. One. Darn it. He does it. Ooh, there we go. There we go. That may not be bad. here looks up flat I don't mind that that runs 
Thing on all others. Yeah, feel free to to let me know. Um, there are going to be some rides that are going to overlap as far as like what we do for for the hack. I mean, they're going to be slightly different each time. Um, and and some of the things I'm showing are are like a certain way to do it, whereas you can do it another way using the existing hack um, or the existing hacks that we already talked about. Um, the the challenge is just finding enough interesting different things um, that fill out the park well because at the same time that i'm doing the tutorials i am building a park with it so i want to make sure there's enough variety to it so there's going to be some kind of stupid hacks like we're going to do uh, a rapids ride where we do the moving walkway with the monorail and stuff like that so it's just simple stuff that i mean everybody kind of knows how to do but at the same time it's um it's okay, so the only thing that i want to do here is change the brake run to really cruise in there at a pretty good speed. We'll put it at 37, 27, 2, 22, and then I'm going to turn it right down at the end. And that way it's going to cruise in there and almost stop. Because that's what I like about the real one. So, like, um, flight deck at um or bat i guess now at king's island it really it cruises in there and then you almost like slam to a stop which is cool but now we can say that we fixed this one so we don't have to deal with that again i kind of like this double cross over here I had another layout of this type that I had built a while back that I really, really liked, and I guess I didn't save it, or it's just at, in a file that I don't know where it is, but I was going to turn it into a design on New Element, but I don't know what I did with it, so I guess that's out the window. Although, I, I do have a couple other posters that I would really like to turn into a design at some point. Yeah, this seems pretty good. There we go. All right, so we will keep that as it is. So that is number one. Number two, we did our Vacoma um, suspended coaster, which I'm actually really pleased with how this one turned out as far as like a recreation goes, because it is essentially accurate. Um, kind of follows the overall look if you go look at the real thing. Um, kind of took a risk with those climbing, um, climbing corners right here, but I think it was slow enough that it wasn't just really really bad let's see what the ratings ended up being eh, not awful high high very high that's not terrible to be honest um and you know you just adjust them if you need to but uh yeah it has a it has a nice look to it and it would be kind of a fun one to support because i think it would be a really clean a clean support look on the whole thing um this is this is a good coaster option i think if you've got sort of a a medium like size Asian park perhaps or a um, European park that you want some kind of ride like this to go then we did our um, little carry pro suspended which looks fine and uh, yeah whale shark cars would be pretty cool just to have have those in there I wish somebody did a, a reskin of the standard ones because it really didn't look like they added any additional fiberglass for it it was really just the standard sort of boxy wedge cars they painted like a stupid whale on uh, so it, it's kind of funny almost i do like the look of it um but very nice to see uh this one because we you don't see these very much um that's simple enough I, I just really don't see a great use for these in the game and then our uh nice i guess joker themed uh euro coaster here what would I do to the fake upwards part? Um, what I would probably do is I think I would first come in and do this. So uh, let's grab one of these guys. Turn on our clearances. Okay. So we're at one, one. Okay, so first I would put in all these 
different bits here. So the real one's got a transfer track out on the side here, and then we have the actual lift piece, which is going to have some brakes on it, so we'll put that there. And then I would probably just try and build the um, the structure for it. So let me look here real quick uh, at what one of these structures looks like. Pulling up the... Nasu Highland variety. So it's kind of like two different posts on either side with a connection piece for the middle. I'd almost say you take Did it work? There you go. Ooga booga. Alright, so this would be where it sits. Make sure this one doesn't interact with it. I bet it does though. Uh, go right through the middle. Okay, good. You're off by one. And... Maybe too far apart. I guess it really just depends on how you want to do it and if you like custom scenery or not. Uh, I'd probably do something kind of like this I guess with a and I'd have to look at it a little bit more and you just kind of you just kind of make it look like it's um make it looks like it works and it doesn't have to actually work but at least you can have the support piece there I guess these had so something along the lines of that you just kind of build the scenery around it and pretend people don't look too hard um, that's what I would recommend same thing for for this guy which is stuck how he got stuck. This one would be more of a column based thing because the real thing used um, used this like circular uh, tower that kind of spun around as the thing went up. So you could almost do something like this with it. rid of that top bit and you could almost do something like that. Oh, consideration. Uh, this one would be pretty tough to support, but if you go on New Element and you look up um, Hard Rock Belgium, I think it was, um, that, that's that got a, a decent option in there. You probably could do the chairlift cables. The challenge I think that you run into is that they're the double cables, so you and you can't do diagonal with it. So you could probably do a little bit um, of it, but not quite the whole thing. Um, I think mean, really what I wish for is is a dropping helix. If they had that, you could actually make a pretty good one of these. I think, um, but. Alas, we have none at the moment. Those were our first five, and then we jump back with our flying coaster here, which, man, I gotta say, I, I am really happy with this one. I think this is probably the best one of the of the day. Certainly turned out quite nicely. I feel like the pacing is about right. Got that nice roll over the station, although it's really not the station anymore. It's more the brakes, but nonetheless, that's fine. Uh, maybe? So, 
You could probably do it now, to be honest. Um, you'd probably have to do it as a... Um, as just as you do the steep lift hill, you probably just would do corners with it and then turn the thing. Because the idea uh, with that one is it rotate like there's two arms, one on the left and one on the right, and they're opposite heights, so they they kind of counterbalance each other. And then the one gets on the thing, and then the whole tower spins and it moves the ride 180 degrees while the one on the other side is dropping down to pick up the next car. So you could probably do something similar to it. Like, I bet if you went in there and... Like let's say our tower is... Their tower is here. Uh, lack of a better design. And... Like, you could probably do... Do something like this, and then... That would... It would probably look funky with it invisible but you could you could make it look like the thing is taking it up the lift hill as it spins around so that's that's a consideration for you and we have our vacoma over here which uh, didn't come out too badly I think there's some some work that can be done. I do like the other layout that I had shown you uh, earlier, but I think on the most part, this one looks pretty decent. We've got our diagonal brake run in there, which I'm generally a fan of diagonal brake runs. I think and you just don't see them enough in the game, so they still kind of feel fresh um, and has a nice flow for the ride. And then our, uh, our Stingray, and... Uh, which I'm not super happy with. I think we can do more to this one. Yeah, so the new save format, um, it really just allows for more open source plugin type things and the ability to have more slots to fill as far as sprites and stuff like that go. So it's going to allow for more development than the initial, than the original game as far as some of the framework being removed. So you can really do more with it. I think so that's that's really where the benefit of the save format's going to come in. So it's going to do quite a lot more as far as that goes. And then last we have our Valair here, which honestly didn't turn out too too badly. That's kind of neat how they both race as far as that goes. Um, but there's no but just kind of neat watching them both go at the same time. Yeah, you you really do need the diagonal brakes, and you can shoestring that. I, I will have a tutorial for how to shoestring diagonal and inclined brakes here at some point. Um, it's pretty straightforward, except for getting everything to line up just right. So uh, if you've watched the um, Funtime Starflyer tutorial, um, that one is uh, that one is, is kind of showing you how to do rides that you need an exact distance for your um underground track so i'll actually link that here real quick so here's a link to that tutorial that i had just done which is probably the more complicated or the most complicated of the shoestring tutorials we've done so far just because you got to get your track down below to be exactly the same as the track above or else it's going to get off over time so the, the the short answer is to do or the short the cliff notes version to do a diagonal brakes or a diagonal um drop you split off say the back car or something like that and um then you let it go through a uh um um you let it go through the same uh, same length of layout underground and then when you get to the parts up above that are meant to be diagonal brakes then down below you put put brakes so what do, what do you mean are you thinking these these layouts here as just the raw td6 file whatever the, the ride file is what i will do is post this as a, the sv6 file um oh can you upload the as right oh the shoestring rides you can't really um 
because a lot of it's just additional hacking things and all that. So it's not so much that you can just upload um, upload it as a ride that you can just plonk down and it's ready to go. Because all the shoestrings are at least three to four merges uh, with different rides. So it doesn't quite translate over so well. What I will do is post that file for the map at some point. Um, I just have to find the right time to do it because I've kind of been waiting till the end. but. I feel like maybe a progress post might be helpful also. Um, maybe that's that's the way we go. Um, perhaps. We'll think about that. But anyway, we have reached our time limit for today. So uh, not too bad, I think. I think these turned out pretty good. This was a fun one. I like doing these uh, these types of rides, and I think a lot of these you don't see terribly often. I do want to do more of these rides that you don't see very often, uh, just because I think that's a nice point of difference. I mean, everybody builds a B&M hypercoaster, but you don't see many Doppelmeyer mountain gliders in, in the game. So uh, just trying to widen the, the world of coasters for uh, those of you who are building parks. So happy to... Uh, provide some coaster education as well. So thank you. I'm glad that they have been at least informative in that regard because I kind of like to go through the history of, of all the stuff just because I like I like coaster history. That's just how it is. Um, so I'm figure I will at least share my enjoyment with you all and if you get something out of it, then cool. So that's a positive. Um, going through the, just the kind of the usual stuff, um, Make sure you take a look at the YouTube channel if you haven't before. Subscribe to that um, because that's where I'll post all the uh, raw footage of these videos uh, in case you ever miss one of these. Or uh, it's where I'm going to post my reviews and all the other bits and stuff. Um, so the hacking tutorials, the reviews, and then these guys. Uh, I am looking at doing some additional streaming here soon. So if you follow me here on Twitch, uh, then you'll get the notifications when I go live. I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing like a Wednesday night chill stream, just with, when night being, I don't know, probably an hour from now, um, whichever your time zone is, and just kind of building uh, on projects just to at least force me to build. So it's just kind of a hangout build session and we can talk coasters or whatever you guys want. Um, and that at least moves things along there. Uh, if you want to subscribe to the, the channel here on Twitch, then that also helps me keep uh, content coming and all that. If you have a, a Amazon Prime account, you can actually do it for free, which is super cool. So um, we just got to connect it with Twitch and then you set it up that way. So that's an option too, if you want to help support the channel. But um, uh, kind of the biggest one for me is just subscribing to the YouTube channel uh, at this point. So um Thank you all for coming. I think this was a this was a good one, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you have suggestions for future ones or just coasters you want to see built, coaster types, coaster whatever, um, send me a note. I'm on a bunch of discords. Um, I'm on Dirk Links. I'm on the RCNF. I'm on New Element. Uh, I am on Reddit as Daily Coaster, um, and uh, you can also just message me on YouTube or or whatever. So I am around, and you know how to get a hold of me. So. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, hopefully you will enjoy the rest of your evening today. Let us end here with a little bit of uh, pirate-themed music as we as we do, if it plays. We'll play, but perhaps. Go. There we go. Alrighty, so... Uh, thank you guys very much, and uh, oh, what do you think the new amusement academy will be? I don't know yet. I actually don't come up with them usually until a couple of days ahead of time, so uh, if you have a suggestion, let me know. But uh, all right, well, I will uh, see you guys later on, so thank you very much for coming along. I appreciate it. Bye now.